Yep. Water. The wisest man is the man who understands, but he understands nothing. All right, Straw, you are not going to make noise now, but you are going to be sticky. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Oh. I'm just Monty, gonna... you're, Monty, you're gonna do okay. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, Dean, well, at, at one point, at what point, Nadine, have you done a bad job so far? You know, like right. it's, I know. It's like... I'm like, I don't know. I just get nervous and shaky, and the, the internet being kind of shaky is scaring me a bit. I'm just, you know. You nervous? Never. <laughs> you never, never that nervous. We're still getting. We're doing a slow start up here. Okay. Um. Yeah. So yeah. Like, so, like, are you so, actually like streaming now? Oh, yeah, or? I've been streaming for the last minute. Oh, <laughs> we already got bits. Oh no, I got the bit. The bits are raining there. Yeah, and I'll, I'll say this to the chat. Everyone, thank you so much for the bits. Now, Dadine, you know what a bit war is, right? No. Oh wait, isn't that what people? Like, no, no, I, I, I just it's, like, it's 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 horrifying to see happen. Is when it? a bit when a bit war happens, Nadine, if they're just they keep killing the cop, they keep filling it and killing it, filling it and killing it, filling it, killing it, and all they're doing. Is is giving you more kickback? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're a war, you're you're a, you're a war profiteer, Nadine. You're a oh, war no. profiteer. Oh no, Damn. I can't handle. Line your pockets with bit orphans dollars. Oh my god. I know you disgust me. This makes me like I remember seeing a thing with Zito where people were fighting to be like the boss or something, like the Cobalt boss in his stream. And like it ended up being a fight between like two people or something. Yeah, it it it, it turns it turns into like an auction kind of thing there, but like. Holy yeah, crap! Yeah, we must kill all the bit cup babies. No, stop it, cryptic, Sir, cryptic, 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 please. Cryptic's a war criminal. It's fine. It's just we well, really. <laughs> you're you're one to talk after that stream on Team Four Star. What do you mean? How many? How many? How many? How many orphans did you create, my friend? In oh yeah, four. Only four. Oh my god. Only four orphans. It's fine. Whatever. Only. I'm blaming the aliens. <sighs> They're the one who shot her. I just like, leave on. Yeah, yeah, but who who fired the first shot? I think that's you, Mr. That, Terrorist. That, that was oh, okay, you know what, dude? They're freedom fighters. Okay, let's not let's not have that debate. <laughs> Sticking our noses in bloody battlefield. Dios, da, I will now be starting this stream with the Russian for, for the Russian national anthem. Dios da radi toshte ora ra bada boo. Anyways, that's good Do shit. Do we have everybody here? Or... Uh, I think so. No, Chris Zito. Oh, Super Chase. I can't wait to see what happens this season. 1,500 bits. Thank you, Super Chase. Oh, my goodness. Oh, there's Zito. Oh. Hey, I'm back. Actually, I just did oh. a smart thing. I, uh, I grabbed my ottoman, and uh, it's big enough for the computer, so now I'm comfortably sitting down. Nice. Nice. All, right, all, right, all right, everyone. I got, I got, I got some. I got two pieces of bad news today, guys. Oh, um, thank you, for subscription. Um, I got some bad news today, guys. Uh, unfortunately, Chris Zito is still waiting for his shit to get to his new apartment down in Dallas, Texas. He does not have his recording <coughs> microphone, so once again, our imperfect stream remains a little bit imperfect with bad audio on Zito's end. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> fuck you. That's just good. What? No, what the fuck? It's everyone's. It's, it's someone's fault every time. It's usually you and me alternating. But anyways, <laughs> I'll be next. You just, just you watch. You've been the most behaved. <laughs> um, uh, now, but and the second piece of information. I know where. Now, for all those who do not know, up here in good old British Columbia, Canada, we have a bit of a problem called uh, forest fire season. It's really bad this year. So my sister's internet might drop randomly, which is a fun, maybe. May, maybe. It's been okay lately, but I want to put it out there. If it happens, it's not going to be sudden as if we warned that it was possible. Now, if I, that... have my, I have my phone here, so if I drop for any reason, I will text you the reason, and we, we will proceed as follows. But it's if this stream does you... cut off, yeah. that it's because we're actually, all of BC is currently actually in an in, in emergency state at it's, the moment. It, it, We've just it, it's, taken it's, in. Yeah, it's, 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 all, yeah. It's, it's all on fire because this stream is too hot. Oh my God, Curtis you know, is so no. No, no. no. I, 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 tens of thousands of people have been displaced because of how good my sister's DMing is. Oh my God. <laughs> you want to talk People's about... livelihoods are gone because of oh, Zeno's amazing Curtis. skill shot. No, you want to you want to you want to talk about uh, oh 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 God, probates in the chat. Yeah, probates there. Oh what, no. What about what about probate? Hey, probate. Hi, probate. Hey, pro hey, hey probate. Uh, Monkey D. Luffy is is slowly taking over. Uh, 
your championing title of most donated on my Twitch, by the by. All right, so that's Loki. So, so probate, stop donating to him. Doesn't need you anymore. Nice try, Goomba. I switched it on you. <laughs> nice try. You gotta be better yeah, at that. You gotta be better. You got go that man has no ego. The man has no ego. There's like five hospitals named after him, all burn ones because of how hot this fucking stream is. Okay. Oh Let's my god. Dude, <laughs> three fucking islands in the Oceanic territories. Dear Lord. All right, are uh, are we ready to go? Ready to start? Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was just going to open up there. I want to personally thank everybody for coming back here again. Apologies for the week off last week, but guys, this is chapter two. This is vol. This is, is act two, right, Nadine? This is act two. Yeah, arc the second arc. Arc okay. two. Arc, so like now, Luffy is now going to fight Boogie. That's where we're at now. Got it. Cool. 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 <laughs> cool. Are, are you are you lagging, Zito? No, I said art the lad. Art the lad. Ooh. Video. Don't worry. Video game reference. Uh, okay. I get it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Alrighty. Ready to go? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Ready as I'll ever be. When last we left our heroes, Tass the Cobalt Ranger, Greckles the Kenku Rogue, Panic the Tiefling Bard, and Borky the Orc Barbarian, the party was tasked by the accountant, Abacus Sweetfingers of Alavast, to assist her old friend in handling a thief ravaging the western regions of the continent. At first, a simple-sounding job turned more and more difficult as the party's quarry, act as the party's quarry, their actions included kidnapping a child, decapitating a paladin of Avon, and stealing a sacred sword. Okay. The party soon discovered that their quarry was no simple thief, but the ever-living giant king, Ron Falt, who sacrificed his own being and the values of others for immortality and an everlasting legacy. Finding an ally in the ancient druid, Raoul, the party mustered their strength and found the undying King Ronfalt within his own castle. But more importantly, the demon leash led, left by the de- uh, uh, excuse me, sorry. Ah, but more importantly, the demon's leash left by the demigod Stilhavity, powering the giant king's tormented, endless life. After a few close calls and the aid of a ghostly warrior past their time and a very precise arrow, the party fell the demon's leash, freeing Ron Fault, releasing his spirit into the unknown. Before they had a chance to celebrate, the party rushed to escape the, collapse, the collapsing kingdom, once home to mighty sky giants, and made their way back to Raoul with the kidnapped child in tow, wrought with sickness. After aiding with some medical help, the party made rest under the shade of the druid's mother tree and under the glow of a haunting moon. So as you guys turn in for the night, okay. uh, you're in a safe location. You're all able to sleep. No one needs to keep watch. Raul is keeping watch for you. Um, Borky, you dream of macaroons. Mm. You dream yeah. of a good battle. Yeah. How big is it? Like, like probably like six sacks of macaroons, and you're just like resting oh. on top of them and just reaching your hand in and taking entire mouthfuls. Oh. Freckles. You dream of a silhouette of an old, important person in your life. Snow white and beautiful. It's a good dream. Panic, <laughs> you dream of standing upon a stage with a mighty crowd roaring your name as you strum your guitar and the sound waves blast out into the ocean of people. Tass. And con. Task. Your dream is strange. You're standing on a porcelain white floor with a slight bend to it. It's not flat. Your footing is somewhat staggered. It's oh. dark. You can't see anything. You take a step forward. You try to call out, but you can't speak. And you walk again. And it's just dead silence. Nothing but your heartbeat. Boom. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Boom. In your chest. Then you hear a voice. I see you. And as you're standing, I want you to make a de uh, dexterity save. <laughs> oh, God, we're I getting Inception. I don't see. I'm getting fucked in my own dream. What the hell? Okay, uh, roll a 1D. Oh, wait, let me click on the character sheet. The character sheet. Uh, deck saving, yes? Deck save, yep. 
Okay. Oh. The ground beneath you shifts ever so slightly, kind of like a wave of an ocean, like back and forth, like the slithering of a tail, the ground beneath you shifts and you almost lose your footing. You manage to collect yourself and you look down and you see a faint reflection of your face. Oh. I see you there, dragonling. And once again, it moves with another cohesive wave. You step forward. Your heart is now pounding harder. And as it pounds harder, the light begins to reach out, curving along bumps and grooves in the distance. You see a mound, 10 feet wide and 10 feet across, rounded. There's stillness. Okay. You look side to side. Nothing's moving. I want you to roll a perception check. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> sure, why not? Okay, I don't see shit, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> you are you are looking into what is a void. You are looking at darkness and and you see what is beneath you white leading into pale white. What's the matter? Don't you want to do more damage? You already took away my toy. And as you're standing there, that 10 foot by 10 foot mound opens up and a large orange and yellow eye with a lizard-like slit turns and looks directly at you. You realize now the thing that you're standing on isn't a floor, it's a tooth. Your heart, ba-boom, ba-boom, begins to pound faster and faster in your chest. And as it does, more light spreads out. And you look behind you and notice that you are currently standing on a maw of razor sharp teeth that lead past the horizon and out of sight. And as you turn and look, you see then a trail of eyes leading off in the same direction now, all opening and turning at attention at you. Huh, well, don't that beat all. I wish I could speak. <laughs> you are completely silent. It's as if by force you are, you are unable to speak. You're unable to move at this point as well. Uh, I want you to make a knowledge religion or a general intelligence check of your choice. Okay, well... Da, 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 da. They're both one, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, fuck it, why not, history? Okay. I know shit! You have no idea what is going on right now, <laughs> but you have an idea of who this is. Oh, good. You what? broke my favorite toy today. Oh, you've made me so mad, little dragonling. I'll have to keep my eye on you. So wake up before you forget how to. Oh, I, that... I, I, I want, I want, I'm sorry, I just want Cass to slow. Just wake up. He slowly holds up a middle finger as everything goes back. <laughs> you do. Your eyes shoot open and you see now the forest canopy as you're suddenly brought back to reality. Uh, quick question Is it morning? Uh, at this point, it's still nighttime. Task is the only one awake at okay. this point. Okay. Task. Task. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, go ahead. Task, you wake up. Your eyes shoot open. Your chest is still pounding. And then it kind of subsides. Okay, first thing Task will do. Uh, shut him, like, punch himself in the arm. Does he feel pain? Yes. Good. What the uh, hell was that? Oh, can he speak? Oh yeah, you can speak, and as you speak, you, you, someone turns and looks at you, and you see Raoul currently crouched over top of Greckles, and she turns at you and looks very shocked, not seeing that you've woken up. Great, figures uh, the rest of these chuckle fucks are asleep and just fine. Uh, real, real, real fast, I, I don't mean to cut in here real fast. Is there any way you can get closer to the mic, dude? I'm actually having trouble understanding you. I am right on top of this fucking computer. Because it sounds the mic itself sounds a little bit muffled. Sorry, I do Hello? not. Hello. That sounds better. Okay. All right. So Tass just like stands up, 
looks at the other three sleeping. Oh, of course, these chuckle fucks are asleep. Are you alright? No, Rolo I'm not alright. No, I'm not alright. Apparently, I just got some kind of weird-ass vision of a giant... I don't know what, just a mound of eyes and a bunch of fangs telling me how much we just fucking destroyed their precious little toy and how we're now being kept watch on. I don't know what's going on in the surface. Does that mean anything to you? Because it doesn't under dark. She narrows her eyes at you and she steps up away from Greckles and she lifts both palms off of his chest and she steps over to you and kind of narrows uh, her eyes. Um, and she looks to you and she goes, you're sickly, aren't you? Your scales have faded since you went to sleep. And as uh, you look down at your, your hands, your, your pristine crimson color has faded to a soft pink. And you feel exhausted. You have one point of exhaustion. Oh, well, this is brand new. You should take it easy. Do not exert yourself. Okay, but now what's going to stop this mound of eyes and a bunch of teeth to come at me and tell me how much we screwed up. I know of the world of nature. Perhaps your city has something to deal with that that does not walk of this plane, perhaps. I'm sorry. My knowledge is limited. Fair enough. Here, perhaps this will aid you. And she reaches back and she pulls out a small vial, small red vial, and she offers it to you. All right, thank you. Uh, it is a potion of cure wounds. It probably won't solve the problem you have, but it is a nice token. It is a nice token, yes. Well, the fact that I can feel pain at least tells me that I'm somewhat in the waking world, so we'll hold on to this for later, but thanks all the same. Mm. I must go now. Something has entered the eastern wood. Something that I know of, and something dangerous. I need to go. The girl is inside my house. She should be awake by dawn. You and her, you all leave this wood. And don't forget our deal. Nope, Goodbye. We'll, we'll find you a druid. Adios. Thank you. And she turns into an owl with bright yellow eyes and flies off as the sun begins to rise. I'm a little confused as to what she was doing on my chest as I slept. <laughs> yeah, you don't know. Yeah, oh! No. <laughs> uh, as you it guys would be are great, if Tass gave a hoot about that, but he doesn't. <laughs> gave a hoot. <laughs> T-shirts are available in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys are all stirred Borky, away. By Borky's the... eating his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Greckles, you're stirred awake by the sunlight, panic you as well, and, and Borky. Uh, you all begin to hear the forest come to life with birds, with animals. As you turn and wake up, there have been like a few deer hanging around and they scatter off back into the wood. Oh, oh what time is it? Time to get up. I'll, uh, I want to check my person and my belongings just because I still don't 100% trust this druid. Uh, you dig through your stuff and everything's there. Everything's been touched. In fact, you find two darts. The ones that you <laughs> threw at the druid in your bag. <laughs> Guys, I'll add them back to my list. You also feel a strange sensation coming from your chest. <laughs> under your shirt. All right. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up the old robe and see what's in there. As you pull back your robe, revealing your chest, <laughs> it's a very strange phenomenon for a kenku. There are two daisies, right where nipples would be for you. <laughs> since you're a kenku, you don't have nipples, but there's two daisies right there. And they are embedded in your chest at the moment. Muzzle, like trying not to laugh. Uh, if, if, I, if I if I pull on them a bit, do they hurt? Uh, you pull on it, and it seems like they're actually embedded in your chest. <laughs> so are they like are they like growing in my chest? Like that, a little like... bit, yeah. As you look down at the ground. <laughs> 
as you look down at the ground next to you where you were sleeping, you mm -hmm. see written in common for the darts. Ah! <laughs> Got him! Got him! Pen it oh. goes. <laughs> I give him. He's, he's, he's a roll to say, I, 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 I wonder what they smell like. Go sniff them. <laughs> try it, big boy. Just try it. All right. How about how about we not start bullshit and get this girl home? Oh, I can't uh, even do. Can I do my morning thing? Yeah, it's for it, big yeah, I do. It's it's a thing for me. Penix gonna go in the house while he's doing that. It's time to get orky. It's time to get bulky. And Borky, as you finish your cry and panic, as you open the door, you hear a shriek from upstairs of terror. Good job, you Borky. You scared the girl. No, maybe and she's just scared of your bit new nips. Panic as you enter, you hear upstairs like things crashing over and like moving and, and things like that. Uh, I'm gonna rush upstairs. Uh, roll an investigation check. You enter in, and some of the furniture has been moved over, items have been kind of mussed around. You see a pile of blankets in what's supposed to be a bed. Investigation, you said? Yeah. Okay. Reckless baby nip. Do, 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 do. Huh. Nice. Um, as you're looking around, you notice a blanket tucked underneath the bed that's currently shifting, trembling underneath. Panic's gonna get down on one knee and sort of... Uh, look at my notes. Um, he's gonna say, Colette, do you remember us? Uh, there's a bump, like a thunk, on the on the bed, and you notice as the blanket kind of shuffles deeper underneath the bed. We are not here to hurt you. We are here to take you back home to your father. You see now a head turn and like the biggest, okay. like widest eyes, just absolutely. She's shaking, like she's shaking. She's got the blanket around her, and she looks up at you, and she shake. She's like she's terrified, absolutely terrified, and like you can see some tears in her eyes. She goes. There's an ogre outside. I'll, I'll probably wait, okay. make my way inside to make sure she's okay. Just let me know when I can get in there. Yeah, for mm. sure. You guys, you guys, who wants to go inside? Sure, why not? There is, uh, there is indeed. That, don't worry. My name is Panic, and I've been hired to bring you back home safely, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. All right? Um, okay. Are you hungry? No, the lady, the lady with the white hair, she gave me some, um, she gave me some of those. And she points to a bowl, which is now on the floor, tipped over. And you see these absolutely deep red berries. Um, and you recognize them as good berries. They're a druidic item that if you eat one, it counts as a ration for the day. <laughs> some good berries. Does she got any more? Uh, there's two on the floor currently. I guess I'll take them. <laughs> uh, Greckles, you said you were making your way inside the house. Right. Yep. Uh, you, you you make your way inside the room and you see Panic currently crouched down, um, and the girl now peeking out. She kind of gasps when she sees you, and then she kind of oh. relaxes a little bit. Let me um, let me do a nice mimicry. I would like to mimic just like a, a the really nice soft song of a robin, just to see if, if it'll calm her down a little bit. Okay. You have nothing do to fear. Do a performance it. check. Oh, okay. Uh, boo, 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 boo. Okay. It's a pretty casual robin call, but it's nonetheless very impressive. You've got nothing to worry about me. I'm a and good bird. <laughs> Her face glows and she like panics. She like rushes out of like from underneath the bed and she walks over to you, Greckles, and she reaches up and she just grabs your beak with both hands. <laughs> oh, this is so cute. This is so Someone's cute. energetic. 
Well, you know what? Be better this than going right for the flower nips. Oh, oh, I'll, I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and pick her up and just kind of carry her, see if she'll let me. Uh, she she actually kind of grabs you, and before you even pick her up, she goes, "You're the most beautiful bluebird I've ever seen. You're so big." No. Well, you're the cutest little button I've ever seen. Borky yells I'm not from a outside. But Borky yells from outside. No, he's not. <laughs> also, the hey, still hey, out there. hey, hey, don't listen. Don't worry about him. I accidentally almost killed him, believe that or not. What? Don't, shh, 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 shh. don't worry, don't worry. I'm gonna I'm gonna put my I'm gonna put my towns over here ears so she so my my sounds muffled a little bit. Borky, shut up! <laughs> you shut up, flower nips! Don't make me stick another dart in your ass! Troy, um, see what while happens. All this, while all this is Collect, happening, I, while Collect all this is badges. happening, I guess fucking yeah. What? Go go ahead, task. The, oh, well, I'm sorry. Was it? I guess while all this is happening, just task. But fucking Taurus just comes up the stairs. Oh my god, will you all stop? <sighs> the girl looks also like even more ecstatic when she sees task. A cobalt. Wow. You're the first human who actually figured out what I was right from the get-go. My dad reads me books about cobalts before I go to bed. I hate to ask, what does the stories tell you? It's about, um, she kind of looks up at Greckles nervously and kind of to panic, and then back to you, and she goes, it's about a bunch of different cobalts, and, and they kind of go on adventures and stuff. I really like it. Um, there's a red one like you in it. Um, he uses fire magic. Huh. Um, this went a lot more positive than I thought it would. Um, can you use fire magic? No, unfortunately, I cannot. I'm not- I- uh, I panic, don't- I don't uh, have panic, fire breath. Panic, uh, sort of nudges. Uh, nudges. Uh, hang on. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? No, I'm trying yeah. to see if I'm trying to see if I've got a spell still. Okay. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Forget what I said anything. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, where am I? Oh wait. Oh. Wait, no. Um, I do, I do, uh, I do nudge task, and I say, just say you, say you know fire magic. Yes, I I do know some sort of incantation of fire. Roll a deception check. <laughs> Panic, fuck. <laughs> she rolled pretty high. <laughs> Damn it. Oh shit. Oh, by one point. She kind of narrows her eyes at you. She doesn't say anything. She kind of like narrows her eyes and kind of cocks her head a little bit. And she goes, okay. He can prove it. Um, and she points up to Panic. The pretty lady said that we were going to go back to my dad. <laughs> What? Don't worry, we're gonna get you home safe. Wait, okay. I, are you? I'm the pretty lady. I like this human. You got really long hair, and you're beautiful. <laughs> you know what? I'll take it. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be a fun trip back. Yes, Alrighty, let's connect. head out. Now we must yeah. warn you: there is a fourth outside. Don't be don't be afraid of him. Do not this not he's not dangerous. He's just stupid. I second that. Yes, he is he is very big and he is loud, but he is harmless. Okay. Well, um I mean I would argue he I mean, <laughs> Um He's been standing there the whole time. Well, I'd argue he'd Alright, Borky's Miss... doing one handed push ups outside now for the rest of the duration of this conversation. Uh Mr. Bluebird, can I hold your hand? Oh my god. How about this? I just, I, I, sco I scoop her, I want to scoop her up, and I keep wanting to make, like, cute little bird calls. Uh, would that be performance or charisma to just, try, just lighten her mood? Uh, let's do general charisma for that. <laughs> oh, man. Nice. She, um, uh, she's nervous, obviously. I mean, this is not a place where she should be at all. Um, 
And considering all the events that happened to her, she has a right to be extremely like, she She seems oh, a tad sure. bit traumatized. She seems, you know, shaken, but you seem to ease that away. Um, you tend to kind of comfort her out of this panic. And even when you kind of lead her outside, she's a little too big for you to carry. She is six years old. She's not like a, a, an infant by any means. Sure. Um, you end up tugging her by the hand. You kind of like go to pick her up. And you're like, actually, probably Ooh. this won't work out. I have an idea. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I have a quick idea. Yeah, for sure. Uh, is she big enough to ride back on Tarisk? Uh, yeah, he's about the size of a large dog, probably. All right. But well, it's a matter of whether she's comfortable with doing that, mm -hmm. though. That's the well, question. I, 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 obviously, I'd give her an offer if she wants that. Okay. Uh, do you do you offer that to her? Yes. Uh, if, if she when she sees Tarisk, Task will offer her a ride if she so what wishes to. Okay. I don't know. She looks nervously at Tarisk. He's kind of scary looking. He's cool looking, but he's for a kid. He's kind of scary. Fair and enough. And she kind of pushes herself a little bit closer to Greco, and she goes, "I don't like your dog very much. I'm sorry." Oh, that's all right, little one. Fair enough. Um, I like you though. Oh well, I like you too. I wasn't I wasn't talking to you, Mr. Boober, but oh! I like you too. <laughs> I can't I can't tell where she's looking. <laughs> Get in line, flower nips, it's my turn for praise. <laughs> uh you lead her outside of the, the house and back outside to the mother tree and you guys reconvene with Borky. Um for the sake of time. <laughs> So you notice her grip uh, kind of tightens on you a bit, Greckles, as you approach Borky, who's now done his morning exercises and he's kind of flexing. Oh, 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 oh. Get up strong, man. It's time to go. And it will. That would do. That would do. Hi there, little girl. How's you doing? Borky gets, like, comes up and gets really close to her. Hey, how's it going? Panic, <laughs> panic holds Bro. up a, a hand. I want, okay, Borky, I want you to roll charisma check with disadvantage, please. Oh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Here we go. Oh, fuck. Oh, this should be good. This is great. <laughs> all, right, all right. So a charisma check. All right. So I, Just a general charisma check. Just so I, I click the charisma then. Yeah, yeah just click the charisma. charisma. Okay. Not bad. <laughs> she looks up at you and she goes, please don't eat me. Oh, it eat you. You're too sweet for me, and Borky hands her a macaroon. <laughs> Could I offer you a macaroon in this try and tarm? These, these are Donna's from her shop, yeah. where I'm, I'm from. Yeah, she got me. Yeah, I went to a shop. They're so good, aren't they? Yeah, they're they're really good. And she reaches and she grabs one, and she like nibbles on it. You can tell she's kind of still, like. Not completely there, but she she takes it Bork, courteously. Bork, Bork. And she I got a bag. I got a bag full of movie if you're ever hungry. And Borky winks at her, and Borky gets up, good to go. Okay. So you guys collect everything you have. Um, you collect Taurus, you collect the girl. Um, and for the sake of those watching, uh, we're gonna kind of skip some travel just to, for the sake of time. Um, you guys make your way out of the Briars Glen, um, feeling at ease uh, instead of when you entered. Um, it's a beautiful day. Um, there's once again a stillness, yet there's a slight breeze every once in a while, as if to remind you that this place has kind of come back to life since Ronfall has come through. You make your way out to Dragon's Take, still abandoned. No one's there. You kind of poke your head into Meredith's house, and you see the tapestry, completely white, faded, sprawled on the table. And you close the door. Nothing for you there. Cool. And you press forward, traveling. You make rest before you reach uh, Everbright. Mm -hmm. You all sleep soundly. Task, your dreams are restless. You wake up still exhausted. And as you guys set out traveling closer to Everbright, Task, you feel a strange weight to you. And you feel as you turn your gaze, as if for slight moments you catch an eye watching you. And as you turn and look at it, it's gone. And you turn back the other way and it's gone. And you don't see it for sure, but you feel it there. And you start to feel kind of sickly, just exhausted, tired, kind of irritable. And you don't have anything really you can do. You try eating and it sates your hunger, but it's hard to say. Task, the girl, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, Task, what's going on? 
Well, it all started a, it all started a night ago, where I had a very very cute vision of a mound of eyes staring at me and telling me how much it was nice that we destroyed her whatever the creature's things plaything was. And now I just feel like complete garbage the whole ride here. Do you think it's still Havity? I don't know. Did we... Uh, did, did the voice sound familiar? Well, it's the first time you've heard it, so you have nothing to compare it to. Ah, crap. crap. Uh, I guess say through general knowledge, and considering it refers to a plaything, and you kind of yeah. you were the one that destroyed the altar... You can put two and two together and kind of piece that this was probably still Havity, like, trying to talk to you and try and scare you. Most likely. I'm just now, now I'm walking, now I'm walking with a demon talking in my head and I can't sleep at night. Hmm. Well, let me know if you see anything. I'm seeing eyes pop up in the shadows. Maybe once we get back to town, we can figure something out with that. Whatever clerics are around, that'd be most appreciative. I agree. You guys make your way up to Crawford's Bend, which is the river, if you recall, um, that you made your way to. Um, the bridge was destroyed, and now in its place is a very sort of rickety looking suspension bridge. Um, more of a placeholder for a new bridge to be fixed. I'll go Ooh, first. If you I can make it across, guy. everyone can make it across. Borky crosses uh, the bridge. Okay. Borky, you fump, 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 fump on the bridge. The wood panels kind of creak under your large steps. You make your way into the middle of it. You kind of bounce up and down a couple times. It sways to and fro. There's some creaking. Um, for anyone who wants to do it, roll an intelligence check. I guess we may as well all do it. Ooh, not me. Good. The bard has the higher roll. That makes so much more sense. Uh, between... Uh task between you and uh panic you're able to discern that probably going maybe two at a time and borky going on his own is the best thing uh the bridge is functional but it's not stellar it's not a very greatly made bridge okay. it was made in haste obviously mm. borky you're on the bridge what do you do uh borky turns back to the guys I see. It's not that bad. Orky starts bouncing up and down on it. You fucking no! Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Why? Why? Pass pulls out his bow and points at him. I will kill you where you stand. Keep moving. All right, oh, all right fine. Whatever you say. Oh, the girl gasps at 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 you pulling out your bow. Task. Borky puts his hands up and walks. Fine, fine. Whatever. She's having some fun. Look, look at me, I'm, he's muttering off. Look at me, I'm Task, I'm pink now. <laughs> Don't worry about them, this is actually kind of normal for us. Well, you shouldn't hurt your friends. Not on no, purpose, but, anyway. No, shouldn't hurt your friends, but don't worry. You know how, uh, I guess you humans call it roughhousing? Um, yeah, I guess. It's sort of like that. Um, as you guys are standing there, the girl actually look, and you see actually on the grass, where you actually first saw her, uh, you see the daisy chain that was left behind actually sitting on the grass, now kind of wilted and dying. And the girl kind of looks at it mournfully. What's wrong? Where did the big blue guy go? Big blue guy? Welcome. Yeah. He is big and he was blue. He spoke words I didn't understand, but he was nice to me. Well, when he was blue, but when he was red, he was really bad. Well, darling, I tell you what, he's not red anymore. In fact, he's all blue, and I think he's gone back home. He did? I think so. Uh, tell me, have you ever heard of a story of a city built in the clouds? No. Well, we it didn't sounds, either. But it sounds like something out of a storybook. It does. 
And you know what? The big blue guy said that that's where he was off to. Really? Yep. Do you think I'll see him again? Maybe. Just keep thinking on that. Say a prayer for him. Okay. Forky, I will. Forky yells from across the the like river and Can we go already? We're near Lily's house. I'll give her a joy and hug. Uh, you guys make your way across the bridge. It's pretty spooky and the girl's really scared because it's really high up. But you manage to make your way across. You guys kind of detour, um, and you make your way to Lily's house, and you see nailed on the door is a note saying, Gone out to help the deer herds. We'll be back in a few days. Where, where, where are the deer herds? Where are they? Did we pass them? A we're little not... weasel sitting in front of the house kind of looks at you and just... <laughs> uh, okay, uh, Bor Borky. Borky turns to the guys. All right. Now, we thought we, now we're supposed to talk to her. we got to talk to little Lily, because the, the owl lady was like, I want to talk to Lily, because I want her... To, to be the, the president, the, the, the chief of the forest, right? Borky, we really should be bringing Colette back. To yeah, 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 yeah. Does, a... does anyone have pen and paper? I want to leave a note. Mm. Borky, you can't write. I'm How a, can you leave a I'm note? Gonna, I'm going to say what I want to write. I figured one of, you, one of you would do that. Why don't you carve it in the door? Task mischievously smiles as he hopes that Borky goes with it. I still don't know how to write, you know, though, so... Uh... Oh, it's super easy. Just draw a picture. All right, I think, uh... uh... Borky, can Borky be suspicious? Can Borky be suspicious? Uh, in insight check, and then uh, Greckles and Task deception checks, please. <laughs> <laughs> Roll an insight, Borky. I'm trying to find insight here real fast, sorry. Uh, it's under your skills where your like athletics and acrobatics would be. Task is being a jerk today. I don't want to listen to Task, but Greckles would never lie to me. <laughs> In fact, Greckles, I, I might take a little control here. You do have mm -hmm. a dagger that would be perfect for this uh, this venture. Why not let him use his axe? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as as much as I would love to sit here and waste time, Borky, really shouldn't we be on our way? We should, we should tell her we're looking for her, though. Well, here's the thing, Borky, is that inside the town, there's an entire guild of druids. We could speak to them. Wait, is there? Sorry, out of character. Yeah, yeah, yeah there yeah. is. There, yeah, there, there is. is. That, 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 that's what we were suggested to do. Oh, I didn't... didn't we didn't go there when we were here last time. No, well, well, we never had really we had the opportunity, we, but we were told. Yeah, we uh, oh, I fucking forgot about that shit. I apologize. All right, I'll, 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 no, I'll, 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 I'll wrap the scene up. So, I, all right, real fast. Borky takes the dagger out of out of, out of out of Greckle's hands, and Borky very quickly begins drawing the worst stick figure you've ever seen. It With takes up the entire door, and your 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 hand kind of like jumps as it kind of goes through each grid of the house. Uh, her weasel thimble is actually there watching this happen with these beady little eyes. And then you actually like try inside your name, which is basically just a bunch of random stabs, which you eventually actually stab through the door. <laughs> and then you pull out the knife, you hand it back to Greckles. Day. Thimble has a single tear. <laughs> Day. Um. Okay. We'll regular I'm gonna I'm gonna hold it. I'm gonna hold it. I'm gonna get right in Borky's face and just hold the dagger right up to his face. Yeah. Borky. This is all I have left to remember my family, the only family that ever gave a damn about me by don't touch it ever again. And he just leaves. Borky grabs him by the freaking shoulder. And Good turns, luck. Turns. Let's try the grapple check. Nope, grapple check. Athletics versus acrobatics. Oh my, so, so who, which one for which? Good luck. You get athletics, Borky. I get athletics? Yeah. You can choose acrobatics, but it's your your lesson ah, skill. Ah, damn it! Bork you try and duck out of the way, but Borky grabs you. Okay, Borky grabs and pulls him right to his face. My bad. I'll make sure not to do that again. And then Borky <laughs> lets go. <laughs> <sighs> that was unexpected. The girl is just horrified, like. You guys did a good job calming Bork, her down. She's Bork, now Bork, like Borky, 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 
Bork, rough housing. Bork, Borky, Borky, Borky turns. The little girl just does two thumbs up and a smile, like pretending everything's okay. <laughs> It's literally like mommy and daddy fighting, and she's trying to eat her spaghetti at dinner. And she's got this look, she's looking back and forth between everyone, just like, we were going to play Monopoly tonight. Like, it's really sad. We're, we're um, taking, we're almost home. We are almost home. We promise. Uh, to, to, to try and get her back into spirits, I want to try and play. I, I, I just want to go up to her and, and just be like, did you know that I can literally sound like anything you'd ever want? Can you sound like the pretty lady? And she points towards Panic. Ah, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do it. All right, I'm gonna. What? What is? Uh... Oh, it's it's uh, it's insight versus deception. That that's what the uh, that's what the conflicting roles are. For, for, for mimicry. This, for mimicry, yeah, it's. In my I'm gonna notes. say for this, it's more of you like showing off, and I think it'd be more so, performance because okay. you're not trying to deceive her; you're trying to impress her. This is okay. yeah. This is that's, the... that's how I see. Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> Fucking hot damn! Give us your best. Uh, give us your best panic, Greckles. <laughs> well, you see, I'm panic, and I am obsessed with my music career more importantly than my own well-being and it almost got me killed that one time i turned into a porcupine and then ran really fast okay real, real fast borky goes right up <laughs> borky goes right up to greckles be like man i really showed that bird earlier oh wait shit <laughs> 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 um, all right, you guys make your way going up the river town, um, the riverside, and the river at this point has actually subsided. It's fairly low um, because of the storm's gone now. Um, you guys make your way into Everbright, and as you make your way into Everbright, no one's outside. Oh. All the doors are closed. And I want someone to roll a perception, whoever wants to roll a perception. I'll do I will um... do that. Okay. You got it. Yeah. One sec, one sec. I'm oh, sorry. I... Sorry, I was all tabbing out for something real fast here. Uh, perception? Oh, oh geez. panic. Damn panic. All the 20s today. Tear. Same place as where your athletics and acrobatics are. There we go. Yeah. Right next. Oh, oh shit. Your I first be right next one was... I did it twice. My, my bad. Ignore that second one. Uh, Borky, you're kind of at the moment talking with the girl and handing her more macaroons. She asked for some more. Yeah. Um, Greckles and Task, you see Gorb. Standing in the middle of town. Oh no! Oh, and across from him are two armored figures, armed to the teeth. Panic! You are able to look closely. They are not wielding their weapons. They are actually currently engaging in conversation with Gorb, in a language that you don't understand. Panic holds his hand up to the rest of the group, and is just. They don't look like they're fighting. No, but we should probably intervene very, very soon. Yeah. I and, and uh, uh, do they do they look like they're angry talking or just talking? No, it looks like they're just talking. You actually get a good sight of the these two individuals. One of them is human. Um, he's a probably like late thirties man. He's got kind of a a shoddy sort of scattered beard, tossed brown hair. He's wearing a very impressive set of armor with a sigil on the front. Um, the other one is a colossal person, like about a head taller than Borky, stone gray skin with these black kind of tattoos kind of leading over his face. He's completely bald. And uh, I'm gonna actually see if they notice you guys. Uh, the human is currently talking with Gorb um, and the gray skinned humanoid actually looks exactly, like looks directly at you. Panic, I want you to roll a knowledge religion, because you do see what's on their armor. Oh, good. Oof. You don't recognize the symbol. All right, who has the head? You do, I think. It was me? Yeah. Very, Task, very you, well. you have the head. We leave it back, day. All right. Well... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to inform Borkin what's going on, just so he's aware. All right, so we'll just make our way forward. You want me to stand in the back? Actually, Borky, I want you standing in the front if that's all right with you. Oh, it's really nice of you so you can stab me in the back again. Borky walks right past him. <laughs> Borky's not happy with Greckles. And Greckles, right. and Greckles just chuckles to himself. Won't be the first time, big boy. Mm -hmm, yeah, but... <laughs> the, gray, the gray humanoid steps forward and he raises a hand, a huge hand, and he goes, 
Do not come any closer. This is the business of Avon and the paladins of such faiths. We are here on behalf of this. Uh, we are here on behalf of Gorb, who has actually asked us to bring back the head of a paladin. The, uh, the, um, I wonder what this, I think it's like knowledge history to actually identify what this thing is. Um, you know, I'm just going to say, because you guys have traveled a lot and you've been in Alabas, um, this gray-skinned humanoid is a goliath. They are mountaineering, <laughs> they're a mountaineering race. They're kind of a nomadic race, and they are built strong. Um, this guy is huge, and he's very scary. So they're the dodge, um, so they're the dodge ram of races? I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> they're built for tough. <laughs> oh well, Borky, much. Borky, keep in mind, you're probably the only ones who can be able to communicate with everyone involved. And this is true. Uh, actually, he actually spoke common true. to you. He spoke common to you. Um, right. The, uh, the, the Goliath turns to the human now, and the human turns to you, and he seems actually really surprised at your approach. And Gorb turns and looks as well, and Gorb looks pretty calm. He actually looks fine. Um, he's unharmed. And you also notice past Gorb, the hole where Ray was buried has yep. been unearthed, and there's currently a sack sitting next to it, uh, Gorb, which you can only uh, assume contains the body. Yep. Task, task, like, looks to Gorb. Gorb, we've done what you asked. I have what you asked for. He tilts his head. He doesn't understand what you're saying. Oh, no. Bor Borky takes, p p picks up the head, and t Task is still kind of holding on to it. I'm going to assume we have the head of your friend, he says in, 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 og in Ogre. In giant, he speaks giant. It's giant. Yep. It's giant. Giant. We go to he. The two armored individuals step back. They give Gorb some space, and Gorb reaches out and he takes Ray's head, and he drifts a finger from her forehead, now kind of wrinkled with decay, and he leads the finger down, and he watches his face kind of scrunches up a bit. And his, his jaw grits. And he hunches over so carefully, like he's holding a bird in his hand. And he carefully steps over to the sack that's on the ground. He pulls it open. And he gently places the head inside and reties the knot. And he scoops up the bag in his hands, pulls it close, kind of cradling it. And he yes. turns to you, Borky, and he goes, I'm gonna go make sure Ray's with Avon for a long time. Thank you. I see you armored people later. And he begins to kind of make his way. Borky shouts, just kind of says to him as he's walking away, in, in, in giant, you're a good friend. Gorb stops, and he turns to you, and he goes, <laughs> and you see now there are big streams of tears rolling down his face, and he goes, <laughs> that would Ray always say, and he turns, and he continues up the path where Check you went that to contract. Uh, Task, as you pull out the contract, you see quest complete. Yeah, buddy. Getting you work also, done. You also paid. say payment in advance fulfilled. Because he did pay you in advance. Yep. Mm -hmm. The two armored individuals uh, look towards you kind of quizzically, and the human kind of steps up, and he, he reaches out a hand to uh, to you, Borky, actually, since you're in front of everybody. Mm. He goes, I'm Stendon, Paladin of Avon. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Borky. He offers his hand to you. Uh, Bork Borky high fives it. <laughs> Damn it. The uh, the human like freezes, kinda has a shift in expression, kinda like, huh? And kind of smiles and, and uh brings his hand back in and he looks to the rest of you and he goes, I can see by your contracts that you're uh Alabastians then. Gaining entry uh, anyway. Just about. <laughs> that um the creature there, Gorb, the, the half ogre. You know it? We do. We met it some time ago. Uh, we Probably were sent about... by our uh, our high commander, um, <clears throat> Bork Bronzefang. He sent us out here on a, um, a mission of faith. 
Uh, he wants to actually enlist the half ogre to become a paladin. Not bad. That's wise. Bringing on, uh, bringing on, uh, bringing on the half ogre who has a sort of uh, alliance to uh, raise uh, uh, raise abilities would actually suit well. He probably would take up her mantle. His views on Avon are fairly childish, but still good natured. There's a little bit of socialization that needs some tending to, but Ray did substantial work. It's actually rather impressive. It's a shame that we lost her. Thank you for what you've done. May I see your contract, actually? I guess we just hold out all of our contracts yeah, collectively. Hands mm. Ask Quinn's. The human mm -hmm. looks to you. He, he takes all your contracts and he pulls out what appears to be some sort of arcanic pen and he scribbles on each of the contracts. Task, do you give them yours? Very well. He takes it and quickly scribbles and he hands it back and says, and as you guys get it back, you read on your contract, additional bonus payment for contribution to the Avon clergy. Ooh. Mm. Task, um, as this entire thing is going on, the just really, he's got a really like weird sort of mutual look to him. The Goliath is just staring at you like intensely. He's staring at a uh, task. He's yeah, staring he at task intensely. May I help you? Ah! Goodbye, dice. Um, roll. Of Roll a dexterity. Actually, no, no. Roll a acrobatics check for this. <laughs> May I help you? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, dice. Okay, okay uh, it was dex uh, athletics, you said? Uh, no, let's do acrobatics, because your dexterity is stronger. Very well. Okay. Uh, before you even have time to react, the Goliath grabs your head with these massive hands and begins to press his thumbs into your temple and Darn. holds you there. Borky. You all, you all watch as he claps his hand onto task. Oh, right, what are you doing? Uh, the human, like, gets shocked. He goes, Doros, Doros, what are you doing? And, like, he kind of pushes you back, uh, Borky. Task, as he's pressing his no. thumbs into your temples, it starts to hurt a bit, but then you feel that weight that you were dealing with, and slowly, as if pouring water, like warm water over your head, this warmth trickles from where he's pressing his thumbs into your brow, Back, back down past your head, into your ears, all the way down your spine, down your shoulders, into your chest. You take a breath in and it's warm. And then all the way down to the tips of your claws. And your color, which was faded, is reinvigorated. It's, it's bright and vibrant. And Doros, the, the Goliath, just lets you go and stands back up. Tass looks at his own body, seeing the coloration come back, was up at the uh, Goliath. Hmm. I guess that question was more uh, the other way around then. I guess thank you for your aid. I was in search of clergy, I suppose. The fuck uh, was that? Stendin, move, Stendin turns to, to Doris like, what the heck was that? And uh, the Goliath turns and looks at Tass and goes, he was cursed. Yep. We've come in contact with a demon a few a few miles back. I've been having some nightmares and been plaguing my uh, ability to sleep. I guess it was a curse. The human steps forward and kind of puts a hand on your shoulder and goes, you should be careful with dealing with such things, friend. This land is full of unpredictable things and very powerful entities that we don't even know of. Well, yes, while, we have your while we have your attention, have you ever heard of the demon Stillhavity? I'm afraid the name isn't familiar. Do we uh, uh, do we remember that he's the son of a demon? Or... He's the son of a demon god, which is Girasil, yeah. 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 So let's relay, well, let's relay that information to him then. Okay. When you even mention the word Girasil, you see his 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 jaw tighten, and he goes, "Thank you for your report. We will be sure to send a letter back to Alavast and alert the proper clerics and paladins who can aid with this." Um, can I, real fast, can I do something with Borky? He's gonna jump in here. Borky sure. walks right up 
to the Goliath and puts his chest right up against him. You get your head up to his chest. <laughs> your chest hits his stomach. Yeah. You're a big guy. Why don't you see what happens if you ever touch my friend again without asking? He said, he, he, no harm, no foul, Borky. Nah, but... He actually did me a favor. Doros doesn't say anything, and he looks at you, and he's going to actually attempt to intimidate you, and I don't know what the counter to intimidation is. I actually have forgotten. It's arm wrestling. What's the counter? Is it a, is it a saving that you get for intimidation? Uh, you know, I'm just going to roll it. I think just... it's a charisma save. Is it charisma yeah, save? Yeah, charisma yes. is usually the type of stuff that... Uh... Okay, well, let's, we'll just go for that for now, and I'll look it up later. Uh, roll a charisma save then, Borky. That's a saving throw. Oh, it's a saving Christmas throw? saving. Aw, yeah, Christmas saving throw. I'm sorry. <laughs> Damn it! I'm sorry. Uh, as he glares down at you, there's a sense to him that he is well trained. He is exceptionally powerful, and that he does not give a shit. Can Borky, <laughs> can Borky try and intimidate slightly back at least? Oh no, you're kind of like, mm, let's just back up. Even the fellow with him is like, let's let's not. Let's he kinda even kinda is like kinda slightly pushing you two apart. Mm. Alright, well, everybody, everybody, let's just calm down. No. I you we still have a bit of a contract to fulfill. We gotta get this yes. girl home. Big guy, I don't know what you did to Task, but he looks like he feels better, so thank you. Uh don't mind my friend Borky, he's mm. uh Couple we really of, should. Bor Borky just. Were, Borky stomps off, pissed off again, muttering to himself, "Oh look at me! I'm a great guy. I can make people raid. Fucking bullshit." <laughs> <laughs> right. If you if you we, want to be really tell be, oh, sorry. We really should be bringing this little girl back home. Yes. If you need tell, if you need any telltale signs of what the curse was like, there were eye, eyes, eyes and mounds of flesh plaguing, uh, plaguing nightmares, and a few eyes popping in and out of shadows where they shouldn't be. Ugh. Any information like that is useful. And perhaps your employer would make use of that information. And we're going to I... find Gorb and ensure that the burial ritual is accurate to what Avin would want. We all want to see Ray again. Thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, apologies for my, um, my companion's behavior. He's rather brash. Again, <clears throat> no, well, so am I. No harm, no foul. All right, Doros, let's go. And the Goliath gives one final last glare to you, Task, and like very stoically, kind of sets off with the human. Uh, and you I... hear clonk, 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 clonk as they make their way. Uh, is, out the, of town. is the Goliath like eight foot five or something? He is yeah, like giant. He's huge. They're half giants technically. So I, I so because like I know Borky's like clocking at like six foot eight, but like yeah, he's like eight foot something. Wow. Okay. Cool. Like probably seven foot, eight what, foot something. What, what, what was his name again, by the way? Doros. D O R O S. And Doros. Uh, so in his race was again. It was a Goliath. So it was a Goliath paladin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm. I'm. Hey, Taka. I'm gonna ask that uh, when you're done with this information, you mind sending it to me because I don't have my notes from my other computer. Oh, you don't. Like, uh, just... I, I'm actually. This is all freehand writing in a book, actually. Oh. Okay. Well, again, we can do this later. All right, no worries. Uh, and uh, what was the name of the other paladin, by the way, the human one? Uh, his name was uh, Stenden. Stenden. Wow. Uh, uh, S T E N. Yeah, D I N. Stenden, human paladin. All right, thank you. All right, cool. As they leave, and as Gorb is left, now all the people have kind of made their way out, and amongst the people is the village leader who's a huge jerk and you don't like and also um the leader of uh dragon's take and his son and he's currently bandaged up and is looking a lot better and when he sees you he actually kind of gasps and then like kind of rushes over let yeah, me guess uh, you this didn't is, expect this is the father of of colette right no, this is this is the guy from Dragon's Take. He was the one who you found dying in the rain, like the rainstorm. Borky intimidated his, his son. Oh yeah, yeah. And his son is there. He's kind of keeping a distance. Um, but the the village leader and him both kind of rush up to you, and the village leader's kind of like 
of, of Everbright is kind of looking around and scowling. He's kind of like, oh, the ogre came back again. Arr. And then the, the leader of Dragon's Take kind of looks at you and goes, you made it. You're alive. We should have been. Surprisingly. You have that beast with you, and he looks to Tarusk. Yes, yes, yes. We we have. I have it under control. Tar, uh, Task holds up the whistle. He's well, as gone. long as it's not in my village anymore, I don't care. Did Did you find my sword? I'm sorry. I, I hate to be so. I don't know. I'm rushing. I. It's very I, important I, to me. Greckles pulls it off of his shoulder and just hands it to him. I sure hope it was worth the pretty price that we paid. His face lights up, and he takes the blade and pulls it from the scabbard, this shimmering, silver-looking blade with runes engraved in it and the hilt of a dragon's head. He tilts it side to side and then very quickly puts it back into its sheath, and he places a hand on his chest, and he's injured pretty badly, and he leans forward and bows to you. He goes, you've done a great service today, not just to me, but to Orthrock. Thank you. Greckles bows back. Well, I hope that's remembered. It will be. <laughs> this is the uh, reliquary of our worship. <laughs> worship of worship of what? Orthrock. Ah, uh, Orthrock. Could you elaborate a little bit? We're a little unfamiliar. Orthrock is the god of dragons. Dragons that guide the lower races, not that rule them. Good-natured dragons. Unlike Tesk. that thing you have. Tesk, isn't that your territory? Hmm. I suppose, I suppose this would be for the surface. I don't know about, uh, I live in the Underdark. I haven't heard of this name. There's Orthrock and then... In Sidrock, which is the god of dragon lords. Dragons that seek to rule us. The dragon cultists that you fought are worshippers of that god. And he spits on the ground. In Sidrock? In Sidrock, yeah. Yep. Well, it's chaotic. Uh, I'm guessing uh, I'll just put down evil or, or E next to it. Okay. Uh... Oh, Task uh, looks towards his son and marches right in front of him. Did it come the in use? The kid kind of tenses up and is like, ah. <laughs> Did it come in use? Um, I threw it, and I set a tree on fire. You it kind what? of... I... <laughs> <sighs> there was a bear, and I saw it, I, I threw it at it, and I missed, and I hit a tree, and it just exploded into flames. I'm sorry. You and your Reckles. father made it back. It's fine. Grumble, grumble. <laughs> Walks off, holding his face, just like, oh, God. Think of it as good karma, my friend. Yeah, we just, a lot of that going we, around. We just talked about the forest fires here in Canada, guys. I just, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you triggered? <laughs> no, the fire oh, is. Oh, I guess. <laughs> All right. Um, you guys kind of finish up. You check where Ozzy's living. Uh, he's currently out. Um, his hedgehog is there, uh, but he's completely gone. Um, there's nothing really else for you in Everbright. The village elder of Everbright gives you a begrudging thanks, um, kind of hating that he has to thank you. And you guys kind of make your way out. You make camp outside of Everbright, and Task, you have wonderful dreams of your life in the Underdark, commanding your men, good memories. Yeah. You wake up, and you feel fine. Well, that was the first good night's sleep in a day. So it's morning, you make you... it's morning time? Yeah, you guys rise up. I'm just going to skip this, because it's just a little okay, bit Borky of does his thing. fast forwarding. Yeah, Borky does his thing, scares all the birds away. You hear a person scream in the distance Borky, Borky, in fear. Borky, Borky, raw! <laughs> Borky, Borky, raw! Borky, Borky, raw, raw, raw. Um, you guys make your way in the morning, uh, eventually reaching uh, the edge of Wolf's Den. Wait, we didn't, wait, we didn't talk to the 
so real fast. Out of, out of, sorry, not to take it away. We didn't go to the fucking druid's place. We forgot to. No, we're no, going, it's in Alvast. It's, it's in, in Alvast. Alvast. It's, it's in, in the city. Alvast. Derp. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just. You're fine. I'm gonna shut the fuck up over here. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Fine. Um. And as you guys are getting closer and closer, you learn a lot from Colette. Colette's once she kind of like once you guys went past Everbright, Colette started to get like really like upbeat and like really talkative. Can she be? Oh, can can she be sitting on Borky's shoulders? Uh, yeah, she actually begins to trust you enough that you, she let you do that. She's still a little nervous about Tarisk. She kind of rides on him for like a couple minutes, but then she falls off because Tarisk isn't really a mount, and he doesn't really know. <laughs> What to do? I just imagine, so there's a little bit of crying uh, can, when she falls off. Can, can, but... I, can I be honest? I just imagine having this blank fucking stare with his tongue sticking out on the right a little bit. <laughs> he's he's not dumb. He's very like mechanical in his behavior. It's kind of odd. Um, but uh, she actually talks to you about Ronfold a lot. Um, and she, in the way that which she talks about him, it's like, oh wow, he's really tall, and he actually let me run on his shoulders like this too, and he was really hurt. You talk to you talk as if you met him prior to him kidnapping you. No, this is the first time I met him. He was really mean and red when we first saw each other, and I was so scared when he took me away. But then he turned blue, and he looked really sad. And he said words. I think he was trying to apologize. But I, I didn't understand what he said. That makes sense. And he cried a lot. I don't know why. Mm. It's because he was sad. You cry when you're yeah. sad. Or cry is when you've been strong for too long. That's what my dad says. Yeah, your dad was terrible at protecting you. Hey. <laughs> what? Oh, Porky. What? Okay, what? It was. <laughs> I, Greckles, um, takes her by the, Greckles takes her by the hand. Don't you worry about anything anymore. Like I said, he's back home. Okay. We, we, we found him in good, in good terms. He's safe and sound, everything. He's waiting for you. He'll, you just, you wait. The look on his face will be priceless when he sees you again. Is he happy though? He's not, he's, he will be really very happy. happy. Oh, he will yeah. be. Okay. But and no. you guys make your way into Wolf's Den. And the bustling of the small town comes to a stop. And one person rushes to Peyton's house. Just like drops a rake on the ground and just books it to Peyton's house. And Colette's kind of nervous, weirdly enough. She's kind of like not sure what to make of the situation. Porky's, this is very foreign for her. Porky sets her down in front of him. And you see Peyton Black emerge from his house and turn. And he sees Colette. And you see him immediately rush back into the house. And he comes back out after a few minutes with his wife, still pale face, looking blankly forward. And he, he grabs his wife and he goes, Caroline, Caroline, look, it's Colette. It's Colette. And Colette just runs to her parents, like screaming, tears flying out of her face. And the mother now, her face just comes back to life. And she just grabs Colette and she just weeps into her shoulder. And she's like, my baby, my baby's back. Like weeping and weeping and just like pulling her fingers through her daughter's hair and, and checking her face for bruises or scars. And Peyton's kind of kneels down next to them and brings them both in for a big hug. And he lets them go, and he looks up to you, and he mouths the words, thank you. Nod. Nod. And he, he brings Thumbs in his family up. Thumbs up. really close. It's a huge, like, even some of the villagers are just, like, weeping and crying. And a few come up to you, like, bless you, thank you so much. All your heroes, thank you so much. The Two old lady, salute. the old lady who was flirting with Panic actually brings up a bundle and hands it to you, Panic. She gives you kind of a, a coy wink. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. this is it. <laughs> I'm willing to break a hip with you. <laughs> uh, Colette and her mother, like her mother now is completely back to life. Like you remember seeing her at first and she was just this, she almost looked like she was emotionally dead. 
Um, and she's now just completely like, she's not gonna let go of her daughter for a long time. She's holding on so close. And Peyton steps forward to you and he looks up and he goes, you know, most people probably think you wouldn't be able to do it. By all counts, we shouldn't have been able to do what we did. I won't ask what happened. I'm only happy that my daughter's back. Mm. He, he takes a hand and he, and he, he grabs each of your shoulders, kind of shakes you, like, digs his fingers and he goes, at first I had my doubts when Abacus sent you. <laughs> I thought she was being an asshole. <laughs> 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 trust, trust me, it's a, it's a personality trait of hers. Don't. Uh... Oh, trust us. We notice. Oh yeah, no, I don't. Yeah. I don't trust too much. I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. I don't. Ah, 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 she's tricksy. I'd um, if I were you, I'd probably want to head back immediately and get my reward. I also sent word out about what came. A couple paladins came through. Um, they're expecting some more clerics to come in as well to look out the area, but not a lot of people want to go into Briar's Glen. But, mm -hmm. um, wait here for a minute, and he steps away and he goes into his house, and Colette now with their mother, and the mother walks up to you and she goes, you're the ones who saved my child. Hi. My yep. name's, my name's Caroline. Thank you so much. Oh, well, you're very <laughs> welcome. Greckles tries to motion over uh, to the girl to see if, if she'll approach him. She she does. She trusts you. Um, he opened he he opens up half the robe to rip off one of the nipple uh, <laughs> to rip off one of the nipple flowers. Okay, you take one point of damage as you rip it out. I don't care. Uh, like, your feathers like... also come with it as well. So now where you would have a nipple is now a wound and also a bald patch. <laughs> Just. Something to remember me by. Were you trying to be She'll sweet? remember this for the rest of her life. <laughs> Borky goes up and rips off the other one. Uh, oh, <laughs> good luck trying. No, no, Borky goes to rip off the other one. Okay, what are we rolling? Okay. Well, that would be, I guess, athletics against acrobatics again. Oh my god. <laughs> the right window back up. Uh, acrobatics, you said? Yep. Nope, ain't happening, big boy. <sighs> Yo. You reach and like a pirouette of a ba ballerina, Greckles turns and like re covers up his chest. I'm gonna... The girl holds what is now a daisy, like a daisy looking flower, and the stem is like large and has a giant like clutch of feathers in it. And she kind of holds it at a distance. She goes, Um, thank you, Mr. Bluebird. Panic looks at Greckles and goes and mouths, What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Bork, no, Bork, Bork, Borky, let's real, real fast. Borky points at Greckles and gestures like to make a big thing. At some point, at some time, whenever you least expect it, I'm gonna get you back and rip off your nipple. <laughs> um, as you guys are having this conversation, Peyton Black returns and he's got a fine sealed envelope. He kind of looks at what his daughter's holding. He's kind of like, all righty then. Um, <laughs> and he hands you task. He hands it specifically to you. He hands you the letter. It's wax sealed and it's addressed to Abacus. Mm. And uh, he goes, I sent a message after you left, but uh, this is just to confirm some things. What kind of things? Ah, well, it's up to her. All right, I'll see you have this. Yeah, it's payment. I think you deserve a, a decent amount for what you've done. I think we do too. <laughs> yeah. But Borky's just staring at her and goes, yeah, we all deserve something. Eye on, the, uh, eye on the main prize, gentlemen. We're trying to get inside. Agreed. Well, we should get back. We should get back to all of us then. Well, be safe, the lot of you. And Thank you. He, he, he pulls, he pulls uh, Peyton aside real quick. Yes. So we saved your daughter. We went through hell. I personally nearly died trying to get your daughter back. So you tell everyone who comes through your town that Panic Grimtongue is the best goddamn musician <laughs> in the world. Roll a persuasion check with advantage. I'm good. Oh, this is so, this is my. By the way, this might be my favorite session. This is so goddamn. <laughs> 
<laughs> Persuasion? Yeah, with advantage. Oh! Damn! Nice. <laughs> He, uh, he kind of gives you, like, a playful, like, punch on the shoulder. He goes, you got yourself a deal, sir. Fantastic. I, All right. You've already got some fans, actually. Matilda really likes you. Hey, and the old I'm lady. I'm sure she does. Is... Hey. I'm sure she does. She made you a nice gift, too. I hope you like it. What, anyway, what is it? <laughs> it's in a parcel. You haven't opened it. I'll open it up and see what it is. It is the lion's pelt, which is now a hat, but the entire pelt like drapes down like a great stage like outfit. Nice. Oh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> oh, I'm, no. I'm saving this bad boy for a special occasion. Um, You watch as Peyton collects his daughter's hand and he turns to you and gives you one final nod and takes both his daughter and now his wife and they go into the house preparing for dinner. Nice, nice. It's now, nice. That, seeing... t- Task looks over to pa- uh, looks over to Paddock. You see, that's why you always collect a trophy of the fallen enemy. Go some red coming through your red. shirt, there, Gregor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Borky, come outside uh, for a second. No. Yes, right now. <laughs> no. <laughs> Borky's standing there with crossed arms. Nope. <laughs> Uh, as you guys are standing there, and as the door closes with Peyton, you feel a flash of arcane energy come from your pocket, specifically where your contracts are. Ooh, pull them out. Oh, pull them out. Mm-hmm. Full contract fulfilled. Permission into Alavast confirmed. To Abacus's tower. Entry permitted. Good. Well, One step close enough. You're I able to see. determine that by using this ticket now, you can go in and meet um, Abacus without requiring a guide. Oh, real fast, cool. once again, what's it say? We done? We done here? Yes, we can, na- we, we can now enter the city. Borky throws his hands up to the Yay, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys celebrate and make your way out of Wolfsden, heading eastward towards Alavast. Uh, the weather's a little cloudy, but uh, actually, real fast, can we, take, can we take a quick uh, one minute break, real fast, and go to the bathroom real quick? For sure. All right, quick, one, one minute. One minute bio. Break. Everyone, Timing. everyone, all right, everyone, one, break for a minute. One minute bio. All right, one sec, you're back. Quick five minute break. We're all gonna get some to drink. I will say that we are the number two Dungeons and Dragons stream on Twitch right now. Woo! Go us. <laughs> <laughs> Silver medal. Yeah, we're gonna get some drink. Let me. I guess I don't. I already have water and everything. Am I alone? Hello? Oh no. Oh no, I'm alone again. Um. Ha- hi everyone, how are you? This seems to keep happening. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what chat's up to. Um. Hi, hi. Every- oh, someone's echoing. That's, that's spooky. Hi everyone, I can see you in chat. <laughs> Are you guys liking it so far? I'm excited. I'm having fun. <laughs> entertain us. Here, I'll entertain you. There you go. There's some snaps there for you. Play a song on my fidget cube. There you go. Beautiful. Oh, all by myself. I'm all- oh, someone threw a bunch of bits in. I didn't see your name, but thank you. Oh, hello? I'm back. Hi, I'm not alone anymore. <laughs> tell, tell us a joke. I'm going to tell the chat a joke, okay? What do, you call, what do you call a cow resting up against a fence? All right. I don't know. Lean meat. There you go. Uh, I don't get it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Super Saiyan. <laughs> okay, I'm back. The Greckles, the Greckle flower nipples. Oh my god, the fan art. I love it. We'll get we'll get to that at some point, but it's get, good. Get fan art at the end. Yeah. Um, all right. Is everybody back? Are we missing someone? So. Uh, oh, yeah. I, missed, I missed the art. Did someone link it? It's, no, it's, it's in the Discord. What you, what you posted. 
Oh, oh, oh. I think everybody's back but Taka. Unless he's back and is just not saying anything. Nah, I, I hear him banging dishes in the background. By the way, as we travel, I'm going to go ahead and rip out the other nipple flower. Okay, you take another point of damage. Okay. I still can't Nightfall's going to hit sometime. I still can't believe you gave that to the little girl. <laughs> Let's see what you're willing to bleed for someone else, Panic. You gave her your okay. nipple flower. <laughs> Says the man with the broken hipped fangirl. I mean, that's better than having flowers for nipples. And also less weird than giving your nipple to a little girl. <laughs> so, maybe... Shut up, Greco. <sighs> maybe you maybe should you shut, should up, shut panic. up, Panic. That, I can't. All you do is seem to talk. Oh, well, that's my... That's what I do. I talk and I sing and I play guitar. I can't swing around the big axe. I can't fire the bow. I can't sneak up behind people. I talk. That's what I do. And it's gotten our asses out of several situations, which, by the way, you helped create. <sighs> well, for one, I apologize for nothing. And two, you were the one that almost died back there. It's not my fault. It was it Ron's like... fault. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it was Ron's fault. Right. Hey, hey you guys. gotta use that. Hey, yeah, hey guys, I'm back. By the way, I really want to quickly say, Goomba, I fucking love Greckles and Borky's relationship. This is fucking fun. Because he wants to fucking knife you in the back? No, it's a knife you back, and he wants to, and Borky wants to rip you, Not him? Hold on. You, it's you, it's you, too late, dude. It's too late. You're, 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 I already ripped off the other, I already ripped off the other nipple Yeah, flower. the other nipple's gone. It's gone. I'm sorry. Wait, what happened? What was I ripped, ripped it off. off. No! Fucking leave your nipple on! I want Borky to rip it off at the least opportune time. Like, we're fighting a god, just grabs it and pulls it. Ah, you dick! What even? And then Borky punches him in the face. <laughs> Too late, dude. That sucks. Oh my god. Greckles has, Greckles has his dignity. I'm sorry. Okay. We can't- I miss oh Jeff. Oh my god, you guys. I, I, I miss Jeff. Do Jeff was the saint. My name is Jay. <laughs> My name is Jay. My name is Jay. My name is Panic. My name is Panic. My name is Panic. Panic. By the way, there is, the way, there is insane feedback. Insane feedback. Are we hearing that? Whose side is that? Whose side? Um, what? I'm hearing. Someone has yeah, some feedback a little bit. Yep. From who's then me? I'm going to speak again. Hello? Hello? Testing one, two, three. No, no. I, I think another. we're good. I don't hear it anymore. I think it might yeah, be. Yeah, I think we're good. Um, all right, so you guys continue out of Volsten. Uh, you travel, you camp for the night, you wake up the next morning. Worky scream okay. scares the woodland critters as always. There's also like a woodsman who you hear shriek in the distance. <laughs> um, <laughs> you guys make your way now to the outskirts of Alavas. And once again, the city is just a monolith. You make your way in to the front gate, present your tickets, and you are led in to the main general district of Alavas. Oh, it's good to be back, right? I feel like we only left yesterday. Ugh. What sure does. The place, oh, go ahead, sorry. No, I was just chiming in. No. The place is bustling and busy and as crazy as you remember it. People are, you know, joking with each other. There's a guy selling uh, chicken eggs and like you know, animals are coming through and out and people are carrying wares in and out. Um, you've kind of made the point where it's kind of like closing. Everyone's kind of closing up their market, closing up their stuff. Um, you kind of push through the opposite flow of the crowd, eventually making your way to the gate that you followed Elena with, uh, to. And you present your tickets again, and there's kind of an ordinary looking sort of halfling fellow, completely bald, has kind of a, a mustache going on. And he kind of looks at you, looks at your tickets, takes a glance at them. He looks at panic specifically, kind of suspiciously, and he goes, all right, go on in. Go up the stairs. No, no, the no. White Tower. What does that look for? I'm sorry? I saw you looking at me. Oh, do you see something you like? A man. No. Ooh. Ho, ho, ho. I am married, first of all. And second of all, we did Ooh. have last year some issues with thieves attempting to copy such tickets. Yes, but you... The... The actual literal orc. Yeah, I think you chose something. You uh, look at me. Wait, you look at me. I, I, no, I, 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 I
I think it's because you're the smartest so you could get away with it. Yeah, forgive me. Consider it a compliment, Tiefling. Uh, tieflings are intelligent and deceptive. Forgive me for my caution. You may go through now. What a backhanded yeah. compliment. Greckles chuckles to himself knowing full well that he would have likely been the target. Yeah, all right, buddy. We'll, we'll go on our way now. And panic kind of right at his feet. You hit the booth because this guy's in a booth, but it still has the same effect. Uh, you guys make your way up the steps, eventually making your way to the front of the similar ivory tower of Abacus. It feels weird. The city's the same. It's still busy. It's crazy. No one knows what you just went through. And you're back right where you started. The two guards flanking the door. They mm. don't take too much mind to you. They're simply sentries at their station. Boys, boys. Borky nods at both of them. Oh, it's you. Hey. You. <laughs> Casual fist bump. As they walk in. Let me you, know. you lift up your fist and they, no one moves. They just stay at attention. Borky punches his other fist. Get my safe. Uh. <laughs> I'm you, you these guys <laughs> don't like them. You walk in to the main foyer of the tower as you were led in before. Well, you didn't realize there's actually a desk there for Elena. Um, it is now stacked with papers like a mile high, and she's currently not there. Hmm. The steps leading up are open, though. I guess I'll, I'll keep making my way up. Yeah, why not? Just keep I want to get up. paid. Yeah, same. I want, I, and I want in this damn city. Borky is uh, kind of hesitating, but kind of following it a bit. Oh, oh, hearing it. Oh. Don't hear it anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm hearing it, too. Yeah, no worries. No worries. I'll continue on. Bork is kind of hovering back, but he continues following. You guys make your way up the steps. Clack, 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 it clacks. You see the glowing, arcanic lights kind of decorating the inner workings of this tower. Eventually, you're led to Abacus's door. What do you do? Give it a knock. Yep. Okay. You knock lightly. No reply. Bang, my fist. You go to bang your fist, and you hit the door, and the door just flies open, slamming against the wall on the inside. Oh. And you're frozen there, and you look up, and you see Abacus, not at her desk. Uh, she's actually standing in the room, and across from her, you see this character. If you'll give me one second here to do this. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. New pictures. We got a picture. Courtesy. Courtesy of Star Exorcist. I'm so excited. As Yay. always. You see... Nice. Oh, should I cancel that? Put it up again. I'm so sorry. I was trying to move something. There you go. You see it now? Did it work, yeah, Kurt? Yeah, I do see him. Uh, you see an orc, um, slightly taller than Borky, wearing full armor. Um, everything about him is fairly normal, except for his hair and his fangs and his beard are bronze, like, like almost pure bronze. Oh. And as you look in the room, you notice that Abacus's desk is covered in fruit baskets, in flowers, in like little baskets of like cakes and cookies. There's like a little box of like uh, stick candy. Oh. It's just absolutely covered in that. And Abacus is standing across from this gentleman and she's currently holding a bouquet and he's kind of like laughing with her, and then they both turn as the door flies open, and they both look to you. Oh, a... business. Oh, for God's sake. Abacus just like presses her fingers to her temples, and this, this orc looking gentleman, he kind of laughs. He goes, <laughs> Friends of yours, Abacus. You're I damn didn't think right. it was possible. <laughs> You're damn right, friends who completed a contract, holds up the paper and throws it on the floor. Oh, Abacus, like, she looks mad. She walks over and places the bouquet gently on her table, presses her hands together and goes, <clears throat> all of you, please enter. 
If you would be so kind. Slowly walk in. Walk in. Borky, walk in. Borky, yeah. Borky uh, stands at the door and says, No! Do okay. I'm good, good. back here. Borky? No, Tash turns around, walks up to Borky. I have been waiting for this moment this entire time. I will have the head of the damn bastard who killed my entire civilization, and I will not have you halt it because you're fucking scared! Whoa. Panic this is why I like to ask. <laughs> Borky just sits back a little bit and pa it just pauses in the awkwardness. Get inside! The, uh, the orc gentleman leans down to Abacus and goes, Very interesting friends you've made, Abacus. <laughs> Not supposed... my first choice, What's that but... supposed to mean? I mean it well, friend. Fine, but I'm not sitting down. <sighs> Abacus turns up to the orc and goes, I am really sorry, Captain Brork. Um, <clears throat> these are my employees as part of the racial inclusion program that the council and you decided to enact Ugh. and the orc kind of looks up and gives you guys a wide smile and he goes oh <laughs> well i'm glad some people are getting a little bit of um exposure to it abacus and he kind of smacks her on the back and she almost falls forward and adjusts her glasses and he kind of yeah. laughs and he goes oh come on it's good for you and he walks up to you he's got a very they got, he's got a very uh, decent presence to him. He's, um, you can tell he's in control, uh, especially you, Task, being a person with a history of being in the military. Um, you definitely get a sense that he is in charge. He's, he's very powerful. He's very intelligent in commanding people. And he steps forward to you. Uh, uh, actually, first would be um, Panic. And he steps up to you and he offers a hand. And he goes... Brooke Bronzefang, at your service. Panic Grimthong, and he holds out his hand and uh, shakes it. I actually have heard your name not too long ago, actually. No, oh, really? Yes, a couple of... Uh, what were they? A couple of uh, paladins of uh, Evan? Mm. Yes, Aye. they were meaning to talk to you about something that we discovered on our job. Well, you can send the report through Abacus. I have plenty of work on my plate at the moment. Uh, the clergy can handle what problems lie. I deal with the issues of the city. I am captain of the guard. I am sadly not captain of the clergy. <laughs> that would be a great honor, but alas, I'm not quite there yet. Real fascinating. Mm -hmm. is, is he half orc or full orc? You don't know. Okay. Something about him's really weird, and you're not sure what's up. All right, I, You've I, never... In your entire history, Borky, and you've met multiple orc tribes, you've never seen an orc that looks like this. You've seen orcs with the skin complexion, but not this hair. It's very weird. Okay. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, just one. Thank you very much. Yeah. I, uh, I had guidance sent to me in a dream. I was saw my friend Ray fall to an evil being, so I sent the two of them out to make sure proper barrier rights were done. The creature wasn't evil, it was under possession of a demon. Possession of a demon can expel an evil presence, just the same. Mm. He walks up actually to you, Task, and he actually salutes to you. He doesn't offer a hand, he actually salutes to you. Hmm. I figured you, I figured you were a man who knew of rank, salutes back. <laughs> Very high rank, not to boast myself, but you also seem like one who's commanded men. You look battle-hardened. Battle-hardened, apologies. Battle-hardened and uh, quite uh, capable of ordering. Though, raising your voice at your soldiers is very unwise. I recommend refraining. <laughs> His soldiers? That's rich. I know. Walks... I know, considering I, I consider them civs more than actual soldiers. Yes, <laughs> he's no captain of mine. <laughs> Why is everyone Why is angry, everyone... by the way, guys? We're all getting really mad at each other. I hope we all hug at the end of the session. <laughs> <laughs> it's that would, be, uh... that would be unexpected. Oh! Yeah. Forgive my rudeness. It's been a odd stretch of days, and also I have a man to hunt down. That's fair. I do like to meet the common people of Alabast, as it is my duty to Avon. 
He reaches down a hand to you, uh, Greckles. I'll take it and uh, just slowly move closer to his ear if he lets me. Let me, let me actually just do some, just try some nonverbal like politeness, even though that was a terrible roll. Oh my goodness. Um, you get a sense that even though that's kind of a, a sloppy sort of interaction, this mm -hmm. guy is fine with it. Like he, he seems to understand newer people to the city. He's, he's, he's very friendly. Um, and not in like a weird suspicious way. Like he legitimately is very inviting. I'll just, and... I'll just lean up. I'll just lean up very close to him to make sure that not a lot of other people around me can hear and just whisper, "Garrison made his presence known." You see his expression change, and he leans back and he goes, "A pleasure to meet you. It's nice to see a feathered one in town." And he kind of gives you a knowing nod, and then he turns to you, Borky. And he goes, "Full orc or half orc?" Full orc. You? I'm not an orc. Ha! <laughs> Bullshit. Oh, what? <laughs> Abacus at this point looks horrified at you, Borky, and she's like, it's almost sweating. She's like, oh god, oh god. And, uh, and Brork kind of laughs, and he goes, no, I, I was born of orcs, uh, just as you were, yeah. but um, my true parent is that of a celestial. I am what is known as an Azimar. A what? Roll <laughs> knowledge religion. All Everyone right. or just Borky? Everybody roll knowledge religion the moment he says and that word. Me Meta-wise, that's cool. In character-wise, Taz would be like, what the fuck even? Uh, history, I guess. Hey, real, real, real fast, Zito, can you, um, can you, uh, uh, leave and rejoin the call real fast here? There's, your mic's really uh, glitching up on our end. Alright. Hello? Say uh, say something? Hello? He sounds fine to me. Uh, yeah, there's, yeah. there's a little bit of a buzz, but that's about it. Yeah, it's gonna happen. I mean, it's on a laptop. I mean, it's only so much we can do. Uh, real, real, fa um, real, 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 real fast. How do you sp how do you spell that name of the that the species that race, by the way? A A S M I R. S M I R. Almost A S M I R. Okay. A S M I R. A S M I R. Of no, what? Um, panic. You you know what Asmara are. Um, Azamar are a race. They are, you know them because they are basically the opposite to tieflings. Tieflings are beings that have been imbued with demons, essentially, in their blood. Azamar are born of celestials. They are basically, their birth is, um, inter like, intervened by a celestial, and they're basically somewhat blessed. And then they're used as sort of a vessel to which they do actions based on what they're, they're, Celestial parent wants, or the pantheon of the parent wants. Oh, okay. Inter Sorry, I had no idea what this was. This is really this is this is news for me and Borky. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're they're an interesting race. They're actually a playable race, um, but an orc one, not very common. Um, he he he's kind of like Abacus is scared because um, you know he. he it's sort of a thing where it's kind of like mistaking a person's race is kind of awkward, but Brork is finding it really, really funny. Um, mm -hmm. And he kind of grins and uh, smiles and offers his hand to you. And the rest of you all kind of realize uh, Greckles and even, even you, Bork, you've heard of this sort of race, like celestial races, but you've never met one or actually right. seen one. Same with you, Greckles mm -hmm. and Task as well. I mean, you, you haven't been... They're they're more of a surface based race, so you haven't really met them. But panic, you know of these. They're they're very close to tieflings okay. in, in terms of being complete opposites. I'll say my bit here. Borky stares down at the hand of Burok and just goes, "Well, nice to meet you." Borky grat does the wrist the wrist handshake, like when you pull each other really tightly. Borky does that and like pulls him pulls Burok tightly, really like towards him. Not not you can't pull him off his off his feet, but they, it's an obvious like they're they they were raised around orcs. It's he stumbles and actually kind of caught, catches them off guard, and he mm. kind of leans back. He goes, <laughs> "I haven't done that since I was a boy." <laughs> yeah, you're lucky you're with my family. Otherwise, I'd bash your head in, and that's a compliment. Well, they exiled me and beat me almost to death, so uh, I'll take that with what it's worth. Oh, jeez, mm. you too, huh? Yeah, well, <laughs> what do you I do? know that feelings, court, sort of. Hmm? Oh shit, you yeah, too. We're... <laughs> it's like a lot of exiles in this room. 
Tieflings hold a special place in my heart. Not not to be creepy at all uh, with you, Panic. You're a handsome man. You um, with that. <laughs> I, uh, we're similar in, in different ways, I guess, if that makes yes. sense. We are the same, yet we are opposite. It's strange, though. It's the orc thing that seems to offset people. Um, not so much the Azimar thing. The Azimar is happily welcomed here. Actually, are you, you traveled the world quite a bit, don't you? I have traveled a little bit, yes. And your party as well, I assume. Uh, us as a group, we haven't traveled all that much. Uh, as for the individuals, I, I can't speak for them. Well, if you intend to, um, I assume you are. You're going to travel Alavast a bit more, help us kind of survey the area. Any sort of support in that regard is always appreciated. Panic looks to the others. Well, uh... Should we? Let's get done what we need to get done first. I agree. I, I agree with that sentiment. If I'm well, if, if you do set out again, and Brooke kind of uh, adjusts his shoulder plate of his armor and kind of stretches out, he's like a little bit off kilter with Borky's like fist bump or no, the chest bump thing. And you guys, well, if you're out and about and uh, you happen upon uh, any other Azamar. Um, please notify me or one of the guards or Abacus actually would be great. She could get a message to me. Um, it's important that we know if there are any here and make sure that they are taken care of. Aye. Will we get paid for this? Well, um, there will be some sort of compensation. There's a hesitation to his voice there. Can I insight check him to see what he might have meant by that? Go right ahead. <laughs> you get the sense of the hesitation. It's not that he's going to not pay you. Is the whole thing there's maybe an alternative motive. Something else is kind of there, but it's hard to tell what. We'll keep a lookout. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, well, Abacus, happy birthday again. Um, I'll see myself out, and I'm sorry for interrupting your meeting. <clears throat> and he, he has his helmet under his, uh, his arm, and he takes it, and he puts it on. He goes, a pleasure meeting all of you. Uh, if you need any assistance, be sure to speak with my guard. They'd be happy to assist any new resident of Alabast. And he gives Bye. a final bow, and he goes, Avins will be with you. And he sets out the door. Oh, anyone else notice you had brought you had like metal teeth? Was that just me? Yes. Oh, okay. We, that, I think that's a part of what he is. Just uh, Taz let's, turns let's get around. this done, Borky. Yep. What? Taz turns around, hands behind his back, stands straight, look at uh, Abacus. Crickles follows. <sighs> Abacus looks really out of her element right now, which is weird. She looks really miffed, but not at you, just miffed in general. So, how old are you? <laughs> oh. So... <laughs> she, her time. face, she looks like not at you. She looks to the distance, and you see her face warp into like a bunch of different emotions. It's like the look of someone who doesn't want to go back to jail. <laughs> like there's a hesitation of like, oh, I could just, it'd be perfect, but I can go back someone, to jail. Someone who just got like the. Anger management chip. Yeah, they just got the anger management chip, and they're just like, it's tempting, it's tempting. She adjusts her glasses, and she um, <laughs> she reaches down and grabs. She has a box on the floor next to her uh, her desk. She reaches down, she pulls out another vase, and she places on the table and takes Bork's uh, flowers and unwraps them, places them in the uh, in the vase, and she gestures to the chairs. There's four of them there. And she walks around her desk and then sits down comfortably in her chair and presses her fingers, intertwines her fingers, and presses her palms together and waits for you. Uh, uh Greco sits. Sit down. Bor sit. Borky turns the chair around and sits on it. Let's rap for a yeah, minute. Yeah, let's rap for a money. <laughs> <laughs> huh. I received a letter from Peyton after I sent you on that mission. Yes. Yeah, I Peyton actually wanted me to give you this in that response. Hands of the letter. 
She takes it. First things first, I want to apologize. If I had known the severity of the situation, I would not have sent you. Don't take that as an insult. Merely, things of that nature need to be handled delicately. Well, delicately may not have been our strong suit in the situation, but we got the job done. Yeah, we like, I was really tall, the guy. He was like, he was really the tall. Young... We have a few things we'd like to, uh, there's actually a few things we should discuss with you that we found out on this mission. I would appreciate that, yes. Um, for the sake of brevity, let's say you relay everything to Abacus. Yep, everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. She looks to you, she, her expression does not change that entire story. Um, she takes the envelope, breaks the wax seal, opens it, and flips it open. There's about three pages. And like lightning fast, she just all the way through. She kind of raises a couple brows, nods, and kind of goes, all right. And then folds it, places it back into the envelope, opens a drawer, and puts it back and <laughs> closes the drawer. And she points to a bowl, now full of pastries, obvious regifts. She goes, help yourself. Ooh. And she pulls out papers and books and her quill. And she pulls out what looks like basically one of your contracts, but different. And she places it in front of her. There's a bunch of arcane lettering on it, and she looks at it. It seems you took on multiple jobs on this mission. Very I impressive. We did. You helped in half ogre. That's rather interesting. Mm. Oh, he's a nice enough guy. Just scares everyone. I get it. Mm. That was paid in advance. And then this. Ah, oh, good. You returned the sword. That means your payment will be increased. Mm. And then assistance of the clergy of Avon. That's very good. We also helped a really adorable little gnome. She was beautiful. She was so beautiful. She was full, full of life and love. Best friend ever. Name is Lily. I'll make a note of that. If she's a druid in that area, the druidic circle can reward her. Yeah. And there was also a nomadic goat tiefling. Yeah. Nomadic goat. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. Again, Rivi, Aravine. She did assist us. She was a great asset to us in taking care of the an, an egg. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for Pete's sake. I just, I just filled out her replacement. I thought she died again. <laughs> and now I'll just look at pocket. Snicker, snicker, really? snicker. Oh my god! Just... Give her time. She might. She might. She's a great cartographer, but she has this issue of disappearing for long periods of time without notifying me. I was just about to interview a replacement, but at the very least, uh, good to hear that she's doing her job. I hope to see her soon and with a completed map of the Western region. Now on to the question of your payment. You keep all that which you have taken from your quarries, being enemies you have slain and enemies you have apprehended. Mm. That being said, the nature of this thing you fought, um, anything in that area in particular, I'm afraid is going to be seized by the Alavastian Council, as it could be dangerous. In some cases, we would give you a part of the gold or a part of a quarry's item. But given the nature and for safety's sake of the city, we cannot do this for you. We hope that you understand. So that means we'd have to give over the bag of holding? No. Uh, basically, as like part of your deal, because you dealt with, with Ronfall, you technically are allowed some of that gold in his pile, but because it's cursed, they're not going to give it to you because they're probably going to get rid of it because it's dangerous. All right. I right. thought it disappeared. Well, it, it, was, yeah, it, was, it, it was under rubble, but it's still there. Oh, uh, okay. But it's, it's, they're, they're, yeah. they're still pretty much they're going to be sending in the cleanup crew to get the rest. I am assuming that we will be compensated in some other way then. Oh, yes, of course. Let's see. After all, we did uh, we did exactly as the contract uh, ordered and also thwarted the, uh, thwarted the plans of a demigod, yeah. as I'm sure you are privy to. Hmm, yes. Oh, I overheard uh, your little whisper there, and she looks up to you, Greckles. Halflings have keen ears, mine especially. Well, that's good to know. We'll look into it. I'll send a clergy out immediately. Paladins Excellent. have already made their way, but I believe they're returning with a different quarry. I'm going to send a full crew out there, including druids. Due to, due to Briar's Glen. 
Um, looking at your payment here, and she pulls out a sack of money. She places a king on the table. Oh, yeah, it looks good. Yeah, it's beautiful, right there. Easy there, Borg. Oh, that's beautiful. I've never seen such a beautiful sight. The total of gold amount paid for this contract is 1,200 gold pieces. Each? Yes, yeah, so, no. Total. Just, total. Total. I thought it was 1,000 each. That Your have been contract something. changes as you complete it. So, you guys so need to read the fine print. Do I need to read? You watch as Abacus leans over in her chair and pulls out a small envelope. Actually, not small. Sorry, it's huge. It's actually like the size of like a giant orange letter envelope, and it's <laughs> bound with twine, and there's a wax seal on it as well. You will receive payment. And your tickets are now upgraded by my will. You now have access to the general crafting district, the general magic district, the general food district, the general entertainment district, and the general druidic district. Additional payments have been taken out of your pay to cover requests. And she looks at you, Task. I have hired an investigator for you. I tried to bet the best I could within a certain amount of self-preservation. There are many still in the city who do not wish to serve the smaller kinds. You'll expect that... to meet a man called Wolfgang and his sister. They will assist you in finding your quarry, but you will have to give them the information. No problem. And she hands you a slip of paper. Hmm. Then there was your cabbage that you wanted dealt with. <clears throat> oh, I forgot about that. I have gotten Artemis, one of the high wizards of Alavast in the middle Arcana district. I have gotten you a ticket to have the item examined. It gives you access to deliver the item and access to pick up the item when it is done being identified. And she hands you another slip of paper to whoever's willing to take it. Uh, I guess I have the cabbage, so I'll take that. This has been removed from your pay. Part of your pay, and she hands you the giant envelope. She hands it to you, Panic. Okay. Uh, panic Go. Opens it. No, but, but she smacks your hand. <laughs> <laughs> that is not for you. You handed it to me. I handed it to you to be delivered. Oh, so brash. Give, it, give, that, give that back to me. She takes the letter back. She peels off the wax seal, places it, heats wax, and then reseals it and hands it back to you sternly. She does it really, really fast, too. That was impressive. This is my life, Mr. Grimtongue. <laughs> Grackles is going to grab that bag that's sitting on the table. The, you take the gold? Okay, you have yeah. the gold? No, 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 no. Okay, wait, wait. All right, hold on, hold on. We're going to talk about it. Well, You're not getting all of that. Yeah, uh, no, you don't. That bag is gone, my friend. Uh, yeah, you guys are so busy. It just whoop, it disappears. Wait, all the money's gone? Yeah, I no, just... No, he, he pockets it. The slide... Dude, nat 20 sleight of hand. Damn. I am not amused outside of character. <laughs> <laughs> not even Abacus notices this. She's no, no, it's... putting the wax seal back on. It's, it's, it's going to be okay, guys. Don't, don't worry. About so it. Where, do you, where do you want us to deliver this? I want you to go to the lower crafting district. <laughs> you will find a uh, a man there. His name is Adric Metalmane. Dope. He is currently holding on to um, an item for you. Interesting. What Very kind well. of item? Uh, uh, it was an item that Panic or Panic. Pardon me, Mister Grimtongue. An item that Peyton specifically wanted made for you. Interesting. Thank hmm. you so much. No problem. You are dismissed. By the way, would any of you like a fruit basket? I have five, and I don't need that many. Oh, sure. I'll take. Sure. I'll take. I'll take the extra. I will take a fruit basket. Uh, sure, no worries. We'll take them. Borky pulls out the 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 bag of holding and just takes everything on the desk and just pushes Arf. it into the bag. Arf. Abacus stops and like grabs the candy and like slowly brings it closer to her as you're grabbing just the fruit basket. You have four fruit baskets in your bag of holding now. <laughs> And you just next time, the next time we know that it's there, you're gonna open it up. It's just gonna be rotting fruits. Yeah. Oh, no, uh, no, 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 no. We're gonna 
Four fruit baskets. I'm gonna put that right in my inventory. Here. Does does time <laughs> does time proceed normally inside the bag of holding? Oh yeah, and you can yeah. suffocate in there too. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, that's why I was like Whatever when people were do, telling me, why doesn't Task hide in the bag of holding? Whatever that's a you bad do, idea. Don't turn it inside out. <laughs> no. no. And don't put another bag of holding into it. Why well, no, we, we, we have infinity holding. You will, like you will destroy the universe. I you snort. literally will create a hole in the in the plane. Uh, anyway. Why would we <laughs> Sorry, make again, these? <laughs> Abacus so, leans back on her chair and she kind of raises her brows like, our business is done. Very well. We shall leave, but... Uh, one more thing before we go. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Abacus. Happy birthday to you. What I want you guys to know is that Tarisk was also howling to it. <laughs> no, no dr draconic hissing at her. Abacus, Abacus is going to cast a spell. I'm gonna mass suggestion. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Everybody, make a wisdom saving throw. Yeah. Can I use Can I use my anti magic ring? No, because it's got magic missile in it. Oh shit! Not this spell. Uh, where Remember, is, it's that? In... is that? Is that just? Is that a specific save or is that wisdom, wisdom save? Oh my gosh, where <gasps> is it? Where are stupid saves oh, wow. at? Guys, help me! I don't know where the saves are. It's, it's underneath yeah. your 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 AC. Save. It's next to like your first three um, status off uh, to the the right of it. It's a oh little box. Top left of your core character sheet. Yeah. Top left. God, why can't I find the stupid it's, thing? It's next, it's next to dexterity. Wisdom is right now. It's, it's in the. It's oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I see. I see. I'm sorry. Uh, wisdom. Um. <laughs> Excuse me. Borky, uh, Borky, Task, and Greckles, you immediately all stand up. And begin to make your way out silently out of um, Abacus's <laughs> office as if by command. Panic, you feel an influence kind of creep over the back of your skull, and you realize that Abacus has just literally like made all your friends leave, and she glares at you. Panic stands up, goes to the door, turns around, and says, and many more. Yes! <laughs> and closes the door. <laughs> Yes, I was so happy you were going to say that. Yes, 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 yes. As you guys all make your way out of the door, you all are in back in control of yourself. Whoa, the spell's was... effect ends. It was really creepy. You felt like a puppet there for a little bit. <laughs> she really needs to lighten up. I agree. Man, yes. I mean, can you get angry at it like that? I mean, I mean, look how many goddamn Greco's nipples she had on her damn table. <laughs> Now we can end the scene I'm, there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask the druids if they could cross pollinate a brand new flower and call it Greco nipples. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so you guys, where are you guys going? I'm gonna uh, go to have... uh, the, the the the. It was the blacksmith that we went to deliver this. Lower to. lower crafting district. Lower crafting. Yeah, district. yeah. No, there is an address on the envelope, actually on the back, to be delivered to. Well, Adric panic is gonna go there. Quick, quick, <laughs> real, real, Excuse me. Real, real quick, there are, there are. There, I, I think there are two things we need to do. Are, are we okay with maybe like while we're in the same chat, we both go do two separate things real fast? I'm gonna say no. Do not split the party do for not this. Split the party. Ah, oh, dang! I wanted to do, like two shenanigans. All right, I guess because okay. all right, because uh, Bor Borky uh, kind of wants to do a couple things, but uh, let's. I'll just. I'll go with the crew. I'll go. Borky will go with the crew then. Okay. Um, Panic! You guys watch as Panic begins to make his way towards the lower crafting district. Um, and for the first bit, you guys follow him. Um, you make your way through the town. It's bustling, kind of quieting down. The sun's starting to set. And eventually, you all kind of follow Panic's lead as he kind of follows the address. There's kind of like a nicely drawn map by Abacus, um, kind of guiding you through the areas of the city. 
you see a lot of uh, blacksmiths kind of putting out their forges. There's still the smell of soot and hot iron throughout the air. Oh, yeah. uh, you see one guy finishing up a, a horse's uh, horseshoe on its foot, and he kind of pats the horse, and then the owner leads the horse away. Eventually, panic, your, your directions lead you in front of a very decrepit-looking building. It's gross. The tiles are kind of rotten. There's a sign, like... There's two chains on a sign, but one chain is broken off, so it's swinging by one chain, like, back and forth. And you see a small sign saying, The Prancing Pegasus. And on the front porch of that is you see a very stoutly-looking dwarf with this big red beard, like, tied in all these braids and knots, currently snoring on his elbow. <laughs> uh, how can I help you? Hello there. We uh, we were sent by uh, Abacus Fleet Fingers. We actually have a parchment for you. Oh, right. I forgot about that. Uh, she mentioned someone was coming. Uh, I've been waiting all bloody day. Uh, let's see it then. Hands him the letter. He takes it, rips it open with just reckless abandon, and he starts fil- you know, flipping through the papers. Oh, all right. See then? That's interesting. Okay. <laughs> You must be pulling my beard. All right. And he's kind of flipping through and making comments about what's in there. And then, the, oh, this is not for me. I'll just give that to you later then. And he puts it back in the envelope. All right. Come with me. And he steps up and he pulls out from his pocket a ring of keys. And there's so many keys on this ring that, like, they don't jangle. They're, like, completely tight. Like, there's just enough space for his hand to go around the ring. <laughs> and he grabs one and he puts it into the lock of the building and he opens it up and pulls the door open. The York door like creaks open. And he's kind of like, oh, come on in. Don't be a stranger. Mind just step on the first little block there in the door. It's kind of a nasty one. Tipped my head and almost broke my nose. Oh! Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> How about now? You uh, make your way in, and you enter into a large room. Um, there's a bunch of tables, and there's chairs, like, kind of... Some are broken, some are, some are fine. They're kind of resting. The place is coated in dust. There's cobwebs everywhere. And uh, you see kind of, like, a countertop. Um, it's, it's, like, kind of stained with age. And the dwarf kind of walks in, and he looks around. He goes, ah, you have to be forgiving me. Not much to look at. We only did kind of the special things. Anyway, so let's see. We have one Borky the Orc. We have yeah. one Greckles. We have a Panic Grim Tongue. I assume that's the Tiefling. That's me. And we have one Tusk, which is the wee fellow right there. Hi. He prefers. Well, <laughs> he prefers. Let me, uh, let me lead you around. You can take a look. And then this is the first kind of main area. It's rather nice. And if you follow me into the back here, and he opens up a door and leads you out into a, a courtyard. Oh, what do you think of it? It's not too shabby. Aye. There, oh, is, well. there is a ceiling. Mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's, like, a bunch of bedrooms upstairs. You've got some space to build them things. I'd say for your building, it's not too bad. Wait, sorry, out of character, are we being given this house or something? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, did I miss something? Roll an intelligence check, everybody, when he says this. Oh, whoa, oh, 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 wait, oh, oh, shoot. Oh, no, oh, my goodness. Bah! I don't know. Well, was an intelligence oh. save. Der- der- it's der- not a cave. Intelligence check. <laughs> it's not a cave. <laughs> Panic! You immediately understand what's going on. At first, you're like, "Wow, this place is shit," and then it's like, "Oh god, it's our piece of shit." Oh no! As compensation for thwarting the plots of a demigod, we were given this ramshackle house to live in. Ramshackle house. Yeah, sure, it needs a bit of work, but I got. Uh, you know what? Come with me. Come with me. And he grabs you like really firmly. Oh, what? Like, oh, you had better show me something that's worthwhile about this place. Oh, I'll show you something worthwhile, Tiefling. You're so judgmental. <laughs> so holier than now. <laughs> well, get on it then. I am getting on it. Stop running the arse. You're like my wife. <laughs> he leads you guys upstairs to a hallway, and in front of this, basically leading in this hallway, is this giant door and it's got this giant intricate carved lion with a tongue lolling out and he points a hand to it goes i'd say that's some pretty good work right there it's polished it's pristine it's quite beautiful i say it looks fabulous 
Hmm. Now watch this, and he grabs your hand, Panic, and he presses your palm into the tongue of the lion. This isn't going to kill me, is it? That's my oh, threatening hand. Oh, I wish hand. it did after your insults. <laughs> that's my threatening hand. hand. <laughs> Whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger or kills it's you. My that's, my, that's my threatening hand. If I lose this hand, I lose my livelihood. <laughs> As you guys are yelling, the lion's eyes flash open these wooden eyes that were closed, like break open, there's a glowing of light and you actually see panic, your signature appear on both eyes and then disappear, the ones you put on the contract. And then the door <laughs> leans forward into a fairly nice hallway, new flooring. There's some quaint kind of like restaurant paintings on the walls, but there's four bedrooms, four doors for four bedrooms. Look, I don't mean to be an asshole, but when Abacus told me she wanted this building given away, I had to do something with it. I couldn't just, as you say, give out the ramshackle place. But if you want a good building, you need to start working a bit better. <laughs> oh, man, he told you. Wait, did he oh. work a bit better? <laughs> we did. Here, he hands, you, he hands you a document. Um, Panic, I want you to go under party inventory. Okay. okay. Um... How I want you I to... Oh, never mind. I found it. There's a... There should be now a tab called Renovation Opportunities. Is, oh, shit. Is this on... Should I have this popped open here? Though? You all have this on your pop-up now at this point. I, are we can all act uh, uh, now? Do I, how? Uh, how do I... Yeah, how do under, I... Player inventory. Though. Under... Under player inter... In, in, the, under player inventory, you see player inventory and you see renovation opportunities. Where's player inventory at? It's at the top of the journal. In the journal tab. Oh, oh, okay. Where, where our character, where our characters' uh, 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 portraits are, go all the way to the top of that. Oh my okay, goodness! Okay, got it. Open. So this is a giant house, and it has options that we can add to it. Yep. Oh my god. There. What's what's AC? Oh, what's AC? <laughs> <laughs> you new folks coming in here don't know a lick of anything about what goes on here. Yeah, let me go through your envelope and see what you got paid for your mission. And he pulls uh. out the envelope and he goes. Looks like you were paid uh, 1,200 gold pieces, and oh, that's a hefty sum. You must have been selling something pretty good. Actually, who had that? Who Did Who grabbed that, by the way? You guys get, and I'm going to add it to your count. For huh. your mission completed, you guys have a total of 3,500 Alavastian credits. Oh, yeah. Oh. Fucking A. Is own currency? Yep. Uh. Welcome to Alavast. It has its own separate currency. Communism. <laughs> oh, looks like you got quite a pretty sum there. But at the very least, you can get this place not looking so rubbish. But I ain't doing nothing unless I get paid in some way. So pardon me for being a bit stingy, Tieflin. Trying to get my, my children fed and my wife out me back. <sighs> Driving me mad. Fair enough. Hmm. You should really talk to your wife if you're having problems with her, you know? Oh, you try talking to a banshee and see how well that works out for you. Oh my god, you're married to a banshee? <laughs> it feels like that most days. <clears throat> go to anyway, a, you've got go quite a, a bit of, uh, you've got quite a bit of Alavistian credits you can use. I'd recommend, if you're taking it as this being sort of an opportunity of a guild hall, uh, I'd recommend perhaps a tavern, and then perhaps an employee to run said tavern. You need someone with certification, and that can cost money, so. The other oh. thing you can get is a quest board, and you can basically oh. bring in people and they'll do jobs for you. Oh shit, look right here, right here. We can hire a bard. We could use one of those. <laughs> Panic looks at the hard camera and starts playing. Doom, doom, doom. This, I'll find, let's add a character real fast. This, this is really cool, Nadine. Uh, this is, oh my goodness. Um. I'm, sorry, I'm just looking at all the options we have here. Yeah, I'm just like, shit, we're gonna have to all, like, agree on shit for this. We're gonna have mm -hmm. character. You guys have to be a team. Oh, yeah, this I is fucked. <laughs> this is going to require some thinking and input from all of us. So we have, so we got paid 1,200, but we got um, Th a higher, we have, more, did that? We have... Thirty-five hundred is what is what he said. So he's, so how... I'd say you got pretty paid pretty well, as this building itself is worth fifteen hundred gold pieces. Or I mean, fifteen thousand five 
thousand gold pieces. I got a quick question. Yeah. Is that a lot? Not too oh, shit. shit. I it, take it back. Lot. That is a lot. I take it back. I can I can say that I have a fifteen thousand gold house now. Oh, it's a fifteen thousand dollar house that needs a little bit of a fix me up, but you got the idea pretty well. No, it's being able to say that I own a fifteen thousand dollar house. <laughs> I have a question. That's cool. Okay, so now what I kind of wanted to ask Abacus before we ended up getting fucking violently kicked out mentally was uh, I was going to ask her about future employment. And how, now seeing this, I'm saying, okay, uh, does our future employment also come in regular gold and in AC? All right, depending on what kind of job you take, you get paid in whatever currency is worth uh, selling or the people have that are willing to give you. Looks like here, instead of getting a road built, that the Western people of the region decide to buy you this place instead with Alabastian credits. Mm. Ooh. Mm. We could have called them Alabastian dollary dues. I just want to throw that out there. You know, like a... <laughs> whatever, shut up. <laughs> dollary dues to boys. Anyways. Oh no, what happened? Some of your Alabastian credits disappeared. What happened? It was like God. What? What? No, what? 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 <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Are we? Uh, can we be in agreement that we can decide on renovations later? Right now, we have a little bit more things to do. Sure, I agree with that. I'm just looking at least we have, at least we got a place to stay, or at least somewhere to lay our heads for the time being. That is true. Mm. Custom sized beds too, courtesy of me. Oh, what? Well, I appreciate that. So my whole... I take it back. You do good work. Oh. <laughs> What's Don't your think name? You my uh, my name, my name is uh, my name is Adric Bettelmain. Uh, the Bettelmain Advil House and Renovation and Opportunity in the City of Alavast. Wow, that's a mouthful. Can you please type that into the Discord, Nadine? Adric Bettelmain. It's A D R I C. A D R I C. M E T A L. Dash Main, like a lion mane. Guy who made our Adric Metal Man. Uh, this I place get... has got a bit of history to it. I should warn you, this place actually used to be a forgery cent like a forgery center for thieves. So we mm. so literally someone bought us the Thieves Guild. Uh, not the Thieves Guild per se, but at least a place where they were working out of. They got caught and hanged. As is Alavastian tradition. Ah, good times. Mm. Ah, but they won't do that again, then. Panic mm -hmm. looks at Greckles. Just silently, just... Hey, they got caught. They got sloppy. They're bad thieves. Anyway, so we're going to wait on the renovations, then? Aye. Uh, so... Yes, we'll, uh, we'll take some time to think about it, and then we'll get, we'll get back to it at a later date. Like I said, first thing you probably want to do is attract some people into the place. That'll get people wanting to do missions for you, especially if you offer entertainment and drink and food and whatnot. Mm. Here, I'll give you these, and he hands you a, a small box that inside has paper, and he hands it to you, and he goes, if you want anything done, you just write what you want on there, it'll go straight to me, and I'll be here in two swishes of a lamb's tail. All right. Oh, I just dope. realized I, have, I can get my own stage. How many bards can say that? I was about to. I was about to say, panic. If we get this, ta if we Ow. looking at this list, if we get a tavern up and running, you could be the main entertainment. I will have my own stage. Then uh, people Borky. will have to come and listen to me. Borky, you could be the bouncer. Oh my! So I go to my bed and I bounce then. No, that means you can legally beat people up. But you can also go to your bed and bounce if you want to. <laughs> Borky, Borky, hold on one sec, one sec, one sec, one sec. Are you telling me that I, I could do that? Oh my god! I always knew I was put on this world for something. You know, I always knew I could finally showcase my art. And, you know that big like we could have a bathhouse. <laughs> I have what? my eye on that, actually. Yeah. And Task is looking at the guards bit on that, but then he also looks to uh, Borky, kind of like pulls on his like loincloth a bit and points to the fight pit. Oh. Oh, my God. 
I'm just... It's worth noting, oh. in order to have a fight pit, you need to have a temple and a cleric. Okay, fair I'm enough. Just, I'm just so happy, you know? I'm just so happy. Again, uh, let's cross this bridge when we uh, get to it. Let's okay. finish our work. Could I just say something in your face, guys? You know, when you came, when I was sleeping in that, that barn, uh, you guys swung by with that job, I thought, hey, if they die, I can eat them. And I just, you know, I'm just so happy that none of you died. And I'm glad that we're here. Hey, you know, we stuck together. Guys, I'll be honest with you guys. <laughs> It was kind of an accident to come here, so I'm really, you know, things pretty neat. How oh, things kind of worked out, you know. So if it's if this place is going to be an establishment, it's going to need a name. I've got an idea. Let's talk yes. about it. That is probably the best idea you've had so far, Borky. Oh, it's not true. I was going to rip your nipple off. That's the best idea I've ever had. The just shrugs it off. Yeah. The scariest part about that statement is that it might be true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought we had other more important things to worry about. We Looks do. a task. No, that we do. What? Let's what? head. Let's head to the druids. Oh, what yeah. about this item that was supposed to be crafted? Mm. I think this was the item. Was it out of character? Was this what? Yeah. Peyton yeah. Was? She okay. was lying to you. She wanted to surprise you. Oh, okay. Okay, so yeah, so currently the only thing we have left to go on now is just, uh, before before we go into, like, any character-specific bullshit, uh, the only thing we have left now is to go over to the, the Druid's Guild and tell them what's up. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna say for the sake of brevity, um, unless you guys want to do it in depth, or do you want to just kind of get that no, done and then move I'd on? I'd say just or... get it done. Let's just get it done, because I guess we'll have other things we want to do. Uh, you go in, you're met, you, you enter a very over-the-top, like, you enter the Druids District, and it's basically its own forest. It's, like, a city-based forest. Oh, it's cool. And there are, like, animals. It's like an animal sanctuary, essentially. Like there's, like, wild animals. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you enter in, there's, like, trees growing everywhere. It's, it's very, like, Stanley Park, like, Central Park-esque kind of... Um, there's rolling hills of grass untouched. There's the pavement is just simple place cobblestone, nothing really to interrupt the natural flow of this place. There's a few streams running through. Uh, you make your way into basically the sort of the the main building of the Druidic district, the lower Druidic district. And as you enter, it's basically kind of like a school for Druids. Um, you see that in circles, there are students being taught how to identify ill and diseased animals. There are people who are showing people how to use their druid craft, which you kind of, you kind of wince a little bit, Greckles, as you see them make similar flowers to your nipples. Um, <laughs> and as you kind of go there, there is a person sort of there waiting for you, and you basically file a report. Um, you talk to them, they ask you a few details, and... Um, they say they'll probably actually end up taking the information to the higher Druidic district and probably relay it there, as someone may know who Raul is. But at that particular facility, that's kind of outside of their knowledge range. They're more or less just kind of a school and like a sanctuary. Okay. Well, as long as we as long as we do what we came here to do and uh, make good. Mm. Yeah, they said they they've got a decent amount of new recruits, young and and some old even that they'd be willing to send out to uh, to go meet Raul at the very least. Also, is it bad that when you were describing this area, all I heard in the back of my head was, oh, 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 try everything. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> try, try, oh, 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 try everything. Hey, Nadine, can I make three sleight of hand checks? Three sleight of hand checks? Uh-huh. Can I ask for what? Yeah, it's in the chat. Oh, it's, oh, she didn't see that. Cause no one's. This is what I mean. No oh, one's paying I attention see, to I what see. I'm doing. Oh, Go that's ahead, cute. yeah. That's cute. Make make three sleight of hand checks. Oh well. well. Uh, the first one's uh, Borky. Everybody make perception checks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so excited for this. Yeah. All right. Panic, you notice nothing as something has slipped into your, your pocket. Borky, you don't notice anything either. Dang. Task, you catch Greckles slipping gold into your pocket. 
grab his talon. I beg your pardon. Just practicing my craft, old friend. Take the money, put it in his pocket. Uh, put it in his pouch. Do we all? All right. Do, do Try we... harder next time. I'll keep that in mind. And just Greco just chuckles to himself. Do we all? So everybody gets three hundred gold. Yeah, yeah but uh, it's three. It's three hundred fifty, isn't it? Twelve hundred no, split. Twelve hundred is three hundred. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, three hundred. Three is four. Yeah, twelve. Times my four bad. My bad. Oh yep. shit! I deleted my original gold count. Now I don't know <laughs> how to have. Oh no! Okay. Control oh, Z, God. man. Control Z. What? What? All right. All right. I got it. I got it. <laughs> you guys oh, are God, typing it. Today. I'm writing mine in a notepad so that if I really fuck it up, I deserve suffering. <laughs> what are you a hip? <laughs> what are you a hipster orc? No, my no, no, oh, my, no my sister God. suggested I should do that. I was listening to her advice. Mm. Yeah, I always. I'm gonna go down to Starbucks. Coffee. I'm gonna go to Starbucks to work at my. Wait, can we make can we make it a coffee shop and just like sell B off brand music? Borky does nothing but serve rainbow macchiatos. Oh my god. I nudge I, I nudge uh Task really quick. I just want to surprise him with something. Just let me roll with it. Fair enough. Hey, oh, no, where did oh, all oh, this money come oh, from? Oh, you have no oh Tash just looks at me and goes, You confuse me for someone who's actually gonna tell them. <laughs> That's what I like about you. Hey, where did all this money come from? <laughs> Do you guys want to <laughs> check your pockets? I I I well, panic cat now. Now Borky just has to follow suit. Borky reaches into his bag of holding, pulls out a fruit basket. Yeah, man, it's so delicious. It's got it's got strawberries, right. it's got bananas, it's got these other just, things. This is this is. Let's just keep going. The joke is lost. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you guys keep walking. Um, I want you and you guys make your way out of the Juridic District, actually through the Lower Arcana District. I want you all to roll perception checks, actually. Oh, shit. Oh, shoot. Oh. oh I'm man, having... I got the... No. I got the... I'm glad I'm getting all the bad rolls out of the way. I got the festival yes. from... Yes! Oh! Nice. That 20 perception. Borky, as you're looking at your fruit basket, you stop. Oh. And suddenly those turtle instincts kick in. <laughs> <laughs> Deep down... With your love of lettuce, you remember something. You stare off into the distance and you see a woman. And you remember her. Oh. And yet, you've never met her. But you recognize her. And she's tied to your need for lettuce. What the fuck? Forky drops the fruit basket. <laughs> it, it scatters on the ground. A couple of oranges roll out into the distance. There's a guy walking. He's like, hey! <laughs> Borky walks towards her. You see a woman that looks like this. Oh, it's Willow! Oh my god! Yeah. Borky give uh, Bor Borky. Borky doesn't know who this is. Do, do I? What, mate? Borky's I mean... scratching his chin. Why? She's currently sweeping, and she stops as this orc making various facial expressions and looks like he's constipated. Is kind of making his way forward. She kind of backs up a little bit, like oh. the most horrifying Taz, Taz, image. Taz, yeah, Taz kind of like steps in front of him. Ah, it's our wizard friend. Oh, oh, it's you. Oh, Mister Panic. Oh hey. my goodness, it's been some time. Look who it is. It's Willow. How are you? Oh my we gosh. We are doing very well for ourselves. Do I know? Do I know um, <laughs> Sorry, let's stop. Let's stop. <laughs> Your friend there looks like he's having digestive problems. Our he friend might here. be, for all we know. We <laughs> yeah. don't really pay a lot of attention when he does that stuff. Ass kind of like, like rubs his head for a second and then snaps his finger. Oh, that's right, turtle. Turtle? Oh, your cute little pet turtle you had on your shoulder, Panic. It was adorable. Yes, oh, uh, thank that's you. him. That was uh. me. I was a turtle. Huh. Forky the Oki. Um, uh, um, Willow, apprentice mage. Pleasure to meet you. Gosh. Any friend of these guys is a friend of mine. I'm glad to see you guys doing so well. Oh, Panic, how's my ring holding up for you? Very well, actually. I, uh, fortunately, I, I haven't uh, had an opportunity to use it. Um, well, it'll prove really handy if you're ever in danger, I promise you. Thank you, once again. I, um, nice. I, uh, welcome to the shop. I, I actually got a job. Um, I'm also an apprentice to Artemis. 
Uh, he's this really powerful mage, and he can basically make life. It's amazing. Make life? Well, I tell you. Yeah, mm. he can make life. It's incredible. He's got a homunculus. It's it's so cool. It's like a creature made out of all these different parts, and he used arcane powers to put it together. I, uh, uh, Sorry, uh, please come inside. Uh, the shop is still open, so if you want to do some shopping, you're welcome to. And she opens the door, and you hear a little bell ding, 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 ring up top. We, all right, well, we do have business, so we may as well come inside. Are you certain he's, this isn't a uh, work of the necrotic kind? Oh, no, 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 completely arcane. Very well. Gosh, the, the Hoketh clerics would just be all over him if he was using necromantic energies. No, he's using um, sort of like a mixture of, of clockwork and, and arcane powers. It's very fascinating. As she leads you into the shop, you see shelves upon shelves of different magical goods. You see back shelves covered in glass with, with potions of various rainbows of color. Um, as you enter, right across from the door is a fish tank with a lid on top of it. And you see a large bass currently swimming around in the fish tank. I want you to roll a perception for anyone who's interested in the fish. Why, or why not? I am interested in the fish. 21? That's a good-ass fish! <laughs> that's, a, that's some fine-ass fish. Well, everybody else is kind of speaking with Willow, and she's, like, smiling and making pleasantries. Um, Tass, you narrow your eyes, and you realize the fish is not swimming in water. It is just swimming in an empty tank currently. Oh, man. Magic. It is just floating in an empty tank. Hmm. My um my master of this store is actually out at the moment. She's picking up a delivery tonight before we open tomorrow. Um, it's great. It's I have a place to stay and a place to live, and and she's very kind to me. Um, I guess if you need something, I oh actually panic. That reminds me, I grabbed something for you. I thought that you would like. And she kind of ducks behind the counter past like a curtain, and you hear like a rummaging of things and things clattering together, and you hear something drop, and then she comes back out. And oh, she's holding a slip go. of paper in her hand. And she's like, she kind of, her hair is kind of rustled to one side. She goes, I've been saving this for you since I, uh, since I met you. I thought this, you'd probably make use of this. I can't. And she hands you what looks like a little coupon for Dolly's Pastries. Oh. Uh, couples get a cake for free. <laughs> she goes, for you and your special someone you mentioned. Thank you very much. I will, uh, that's very yeah, she's back, the, she's back out in the woods. He gave yeah. her this nice hat. Surprise you. <laughs> Let me know sure. how your date goes. <laughs> ha! What? Panic. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> <laughs> it's Actually, very considerate of you, but um, it didn't work out. I do. Oh I gosh. do. Want to... I'm. I'm so sorry. I. Are you okay? And she like takes your hand, like kind of <laughs> trying to comfort you. Oh, it's. Oh, he's fine it's, now. It's hard sometimes, but. Roll a deception check. <laughs> Please nail it. Please land this. Wabam! Oh. Oh, oh she rolled a three. Oh. <laughs> It's hard I'm, sometimes, but she uh, puts her hand on. Her, I'm so sorry, Panic. I mean, you're you're such a nice guy. You don't deserve that. You know, right. I have a lot of really <laughs> nice female tiefling friends. I'm sure they'd love to meet you. And I have some odd at tieflings he, too. At, if... at that, he stops. You um. Uh, you say female tieflings, yes? Yeah, I met this one um a while you ago. Uh, yes. You wouldn't happen to know a uh, Euphoria Grimtongue, would you? Euphoria Grimtongue. I'm sorry, the name's not familiar. I know uh, one named Aravine and another one named um, Lila. Oh. Well, thank you, but uh, I think I'm going to take some time before I start dating again. Okay, well, let me know. And the coupon's good forever, so, you know, you can use it whenever you'd like. And, you know, if you don't find someone, if you really want, she kind of fidgets her fingers together. You know, if you don't find someone and you really want to, I'd like to get maybe some cake with you. It'd be kind of fun. You catch up. Sure. Let's Hook, line, and make an event about it. Let's, let's make an event of it. Like a sniper. Okay, that sounds great. Okay. All right. Well, <clears throat> welcome to the store. Um, 
Welcome to the Blue Dragon Emporium, home of... And she, like, leans over to a sheet that's obviously, like, taped to the side. Ooh. Home of magical goods and services. <laughs> oh, and dude. And potions. When she says Blue Dragon task, like, win 180s his head at her like an owl. Oh. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, Task. You don't like potions. I thought you liked potions. I no, I... no. He holds he holds his hand up. No, it was just something else that I heard. But it's fine. Everything is fine. I do actually have a couple of questions regarding magic in this entire community. Oh, okay, certainly. Um, actually, oh, I should show you. And she kind of digs around and she pulls up a rack of potions and places them down. My potion making skills have gotten so much better now that I've been learning under Artemis. I can make like so many really quickly and they're really good. The ones I gave you were just, they're terrible. I'm so sorry. I wish I'd given you something a lot better, but I'm trying, I'm getting better. I'm studying. Homework's really hard. I don't sleep a lot. You guys are great. I'm so glad to see you safe. <laughs> oh, this that. kid. I, I love this character. Uh, this, the, 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 Nadine out of character real fast. Oh, the, the dwarf. <laughs> The little girl, this character, just, they're, they're, they're so much fun. You're doing such a good job right now, Nadine. Thumbs up, mm -hmm. double thumbs up. Okay, so now, gentlemen, I hope you don't mind. I'm actually going to, like, jump into, like, magical lore of this world just Got to it. see how shit works. Got it. Sure. Uh, so you have made mention to the idea that it's not very, uh, it, it doesn't feel like the practice of necrotics is actually well uh, received in this entire town. Uh, no, I mean, it's not so much the town frowns upon it. There are certainly people who practice necromancy, but under close watch. The clergy of Hoketh, they frown greatly upon that. They fear the wrath of Necrecta. Hmm. Oh, that... uh, Hoketh uh, being the goddess of death, and Necrecta being the goddess of undeath, uh, being zombies and, and ghouls and the like, and she kind of waves her hands kind of like... Haunted Mansion style, kind of trying to scare you, but not would obviously. You, would you know. mind repeating those names again? Uh, Hoketh is the goddess of death. Okay, and the second one? Necrecta. Necrecta. I will spell it out. Necrecta is the evil goddess of undeath. So necromancy, undead, zombies, that sort of thing. Okay. From what I was told, uh, from where I come from, necromancy is just merely the shaping of flesh, almost like how a cleric heals one and up here on the surface. So I can't imagine that that's, that would be looked upon differently or looked upon as it's evil. It's just merely a manipulation of flesh. Well, that's why they're under watch. You know, preserving a corpse is fine, but reanimating, say, a dead paladin to do evil things or to gain information of the like is fairly illegal in Alavast. It's mostly because of burial rites, especially for many members of the clergy. To dig up a corpse and then mess with it or toy with it seems foul in their eyes, which in a way I understand. No, of course, the uh, ransacking of one's body to do another bidding, that is a little bit egregious. I was merely considering the idea of say, say, no, say there were no doctors around and the only person who could actually stop a bleeding heart and an open wound was necrotic. Well, then certainly that would be smiled upon. It's just certain spells that are frowned upon. Fair yes, enough. I imagine some of the uh, nastier necromancy spells. It hmm. can be quite vile and dangerous. I don't want to learn such magics. Yeah, I want to heal. Yeah, magic, it sh it, yeah mag magic, whoa, lies. Wow. <laughs> Borky. You um, summon a skeleton, and then that skeleton summons another skeleton, and then they both. Don't, start don't joke about it. Don't, don't joke about it. Skeletons are the scariest thing on the planet. Yeah. Oh. You think mm, so? Really, Borky? Mm. I'm, oh, I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> Panic looks. To, Panic looks at the hard camera again. <laughs> <laughs> um, Willow kind of awaits another question task as she kind of starts placing the potions on the table. Oh, well, that was actually my... I Thank you for that information. I just wanted to have a little bit of uh, clarification should I want to venture into this sort of topic down the road. But I would like to see what you have to offer. Of course. I have potions of healing. There are 50 gold pieces each. Um, and then we actually have some magical items, and oh, oh, and she like skips over to the fish that's in the tank. She goes, and we got this magic fish. I love it. It's so cute. 
<laughs> look, and, look, and she takes the lid off and the fish begins to swim out of the tank and into into the air. I take it that's your master. I, I take it that's your master's doing. No, there's all kinds of strange things in Alavas in this new continent that we find that are just like this. Strange animals, strange items. Um, kind of like your cabbage. I think you showed that to me, correct? I hold up the cabbage. There's all Wait, kinds you... of strange things like that. Magical items we've never seen before. Some of them are just absolutely ridiculous. Could be the nature of a trickster god of some kind or some sort of arcane flux of, I don't know, some sort of source. But Wait, I, so you're I... saying that there are more... Uh there are more arcane anom anomalies like this fish and the lettuce or cabbage or whatever it is and we don't you can't explain that no it's a mystery but it's why we're here we're gonna find out that is weird <laughs> yeah it really is that I, sounds like contract work i uh willow like stops and looks and she looks up and the fish is currently bouncing in the rafters and he watches a realization kind of washes over her face where she can't get it down <laughs> Um, oh no. Borky, um, hold, Borky, hold me up. Uh, Borky just grabs him carefully, oh, not being a dick, it. and just kind of holds him up with one hand. Uh, I want you to roll an attack yeah. for this. We'll say this is uh, an attack. Whoa. Attack? Jesus. What? Roll to hit for a task. Oh. To catch the fish. We'll just do that. Oh. Okay. Uh, oh, wait. I, I just died. I lost the chat. Hold on a moment. That works. I guess my ten acrobatics wouldn't do much, would it? Eh. No, there's no real. There's besides the counter, which is already like pretty low. The, the shells are like built into the ceiling, uh, so there's no real place to get purchased to jump up and grab the fish. Sadly. So am how, I just rolling a d20 and adding what dexterity? Uh, yeah, roll your dexterity. How far up is the fish? It's pretty high up. Uh, task you leap off of Borky. You grab the fish and you land on the ground. The fish is like flailing and your arm is being kind of whipped back and forth as the fish is like trying desperately to swim free of your hand. Uh, Willow comes over and kind of helps you and guides you over and you both with team effort slam dunk the fish into the tank. There's a <laughs> clonging noise as it hits the bottom and then she throws the lid back on and the fish kind of begins to swim a little stunned kind of swimming upside down a little bit but keeps going. Fish is like, oh fuck! <laughs> Literally, it's actually like Ooh. a bass. It's like a big, large, fat Shit. bass. Like a big mouth, like a big mouth bass. Like a big Unha mouth bass. Yeah. Unhand me, you heathen! I understand <laughs> you said you had some magical items for sale. Yes, oh, I want yes. to get to those too. Um, we only have a few, um, and we have some that are unidentified, so they're cheaper, but we don't know fully what they do. So, uh, um, that's sweet. Let's show right? them to me. Now we have, and she digs through. Let me grab my thing. Oh, God. He's getting Boy. magical artifacts. Hit the deck. <laughs> the bowling ball. She pulls out a large bag, or not a, a large box, like about the size of like. Um, enough to put like a, like a small dog into, like a crate size. Um. And she begins to, where is my chart for magical items? It is gone. I don't know where it went. I'm sorry. Um, she places down a bunch of magical items. Um, there's a few random things in there. She um, kind of digs through. There's a bottle. There is a ebony figurine of a penguin. And there's a set of goggles. Oh, I'll take a look oh, at those the goggles. goggles. Oh, no. son of a bitch. Everyone wants <laughs> the goggles. Oh, I kind of want those goggles too. Everyone puts their hands on the goggles at once. How many? Uh, how 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 many of these are uh, unidentified? Um, all of these items are unidentified. Currently, I don't have permission to sell the identified items. I need oh, okay. I need um, a certificate to do so. There's very oh. heavy laws of as to magical item distribution. Mm -hmm. All right. <sighs> Uh, all three of you, we're going to need a vote on which ones you want me oh, she... to identify. Oh, yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We should all talk about this here for what a was, what, was the, what was the first item again? Uh, the first item is a bottle, like a glass bottle with a cork on the end of it. The second one is an ebony statuette of a penguin, and the last one is goggles. Do the oh, item. so there's only three. 
How yeah. about how well, about yeah, then I'll look at what Greco's just them. did? Who That's wants to roll that advantage. Who, oh, okay. I'll roll. Oh yeah, frick. Yeah, she sees you. No, I'm not trying to steal. I'm just trying to take it out of the box so the others don't notice. I'm not trying oh, to pocket for them. it. Yeah, I'm just uh, trying to take it in okay. my hand. If you're taking her hand, Willow doesn't stop you. She kind of yeah. sees what you're doing and she kind of like acknowledges it, but then she sees that you're just kind of looking at it. She's like, oh, okay. Then she turns back up to the other three. All right, so, gentlemen, I, I have an idea. I have an idea. How about this? All in favor, all in favor of the goggles, hold your hands up. Nice. Yep, hands up. Hands up. Panic, you I, win? I don't see what you guys are voting for. I can. No, 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 no. We're, we're voting to see who wants in because, Pan, because uh, Task holds up his dice. Oh, uh, yeah. See, if I get him, I want to use him to keep dust out my eyes. All right, so... Fine, then, I'll... Okay, cool. I'll okay, so I'll give... Oh, you want, well. it on this? you want it on this, too? You know, All right. You know screw it. I'm just going to put them on. I don't care. Oh, They're in my uh, hands. As, as you put them on, Greckles, the dark corners of the store, like, past the hall, you can see. Hey, guys, I figured out what it does. <sighs> what does it do? I can see in the dark. You need this more than anyone else because you're the only one here who doesn't have dark vision. I would highly agree with that statement. Well, then, uh, goggles right. or goggles? How goggles. Much goggles? How much for the goggles? The goggles are 5,000 gold pieces. Oh. Wow! Understandable. Um, I'm sorry. Um, the prices are set by my master. I can't really change them. Was he living? Uh, right. A house made of gold? Magical what? items, Mr. Orc, are very hard to come by and also to sell. We're sorry. This is, this is true. This is true. Uh, okay. Well, I got so... this magic sword right here that can float in the water. Do you want... How much for this? <gasps> oh, I... You, you, oh. You, you, you hold it, you can breathe in the water. How much, we got, how much is that worth then? Uh, she takes the sword from you and she, she places her hand on it and her eyes flash with arcane energy. And it's pretty hefty, so she kind of pulls it onto the uh, the table, and she looks at it and kind of rubs her chin. She goes, "This is a pretty good weapon. This actually could be quite useful for the sailors in the port." Um, uh, she pulls out a another kind of like a ledger, and she kind of peruses through it, and she goes, "I could give you five hundred gold pieces for this item." You can have it. All right, and she takes it and she hands you a small pouch containing five hundred gold pieces. Step Borky up, boys. Rolling. I'm rolling. Borky's done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get all my... right. Well, I guess the all that's left is the uh, bottle and the penguin, the ebony statue, and what else? It was the bottle. What's the bottle about? The bottle and the le uh, ebony statue. All right. Yep. Oh, um, look at this. She grabs the bottle and she uncorks it, and water begins to just spill out of it. <laughs> and then it just keeps going. And going, and she stares at you, smiling. Oh, uh, you might want to close that. You just, just bored. Sweet, bo 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 sweet. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. So, sweetie, you're going to have a mess if you don't put if you don't oh, cork that. Oh, uh, right. She corks it back up, and there's a decent puddle of water on the ground. <laughs> so it's a bottle of never-ending water. Yep. That actually sounds stupid useful. Um, actually, it's not never-ending. It kind of stops after a certain point. Um, we do sell bottles, uh, bottles of everlasting water. This seems to be kind of a lesser variant of such an item. Perhaps mm. the failings of a practicing mage, we think. Alrighty, so then what about this the one. penguin? Uh, the penguin? I don't know, and it kind of scares me. <laughs> Stand back! <laughs> I've got this. Okay, and she stands back, kind of amazed by yourself. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to cast Identify on it. All right, you identify the ebony penguin. Uh, as an action, you can place down this uh, statuette on the ground, and it will summon a penguin that you will then uh, pick a target of the for the penguin, and the penguin will walk. Uh, the penguin that then, after receiving its target, will walk towards that target to the point where it's in contact and then we'll explode. Yes! Dealing damage to the that's, target. Yes! <laughs> that's mine. It's a fucking pretty. Get up. Oh, we want it. We want that. We want that right there. I, 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 Panic just, is just cupping it in both hands. Wait, what? Entranced by it. And he looks up. How much? Uh, that one, um, I hate it. 500 gold pieces. Take it! Take it, take it, take oh, it! Wait. Looks oh. at, looks at, looks at Borky. What, a real face? Mm -hmm. 
Borky's stroking his chin. But as you look uh, at the statuette, it's perfectly black except for the eyes, which are very eerily red. It's kind of you Borky, can see why yeah. Willow's kind of frightened yeah, of it. May I hold it in my hand? Um. Yeah, I don't worry. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. She looks to the three of you, kind of like no, I didn't worry. waiting. Don't I, out, no. of, out of character. Don't worry. Don't no, seriously. Don't worry. I, it's a joke. It's nothing bad. I'm not gonna blow the fucking building. Don't worry. <laughs> Willow, we are highly trained professionals. <laughs> but I do you recommend know, that you do not try this at home. Okay. I, I do trust you. You did save my life after all. So, I mean, I shouldn't be rude. And she hands it to you, Borky. Holds it there. It's about the size of, like, it, it's about the size of, like, a, a, a pop can. <laughs> she she does hand it to you. All right. Borky stares right at Grackles. But I get to name it. <laughs> and its name is Greco Nipples. <laughs> it's your wasted 500 gold, feel free. Oh, I Fair. disagree. <laughs> it will not be wasted, are you kidding me? Fair enough. Borky puts the 500 gold back on the table. I'll take it. Alrighty, All would you right. like a gift wrapped? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, and she takes it, she wraps it, she just takes a bow on it, and she hands it to you, and as she does, you hear her motor under her, under her breath, good riddance. <laughs> by the way, uh, real fast, out of character, we had all that stuff given to us by uh, the we all we had all that magical equipment we got oh, gi given actually by all we the, uh, yeah we, we sold that we did yeah it, yeah oh we did oh, we, we it wasn't worth except, much I'll accept the white uh, white gold oak whistle I hang I I, 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 I kept did, that didn't we have that orb thing that you could just we could pour any liquid in and it would work or something like that too oh that was uh, no you sold that to Ozzy yeah, we sold that. Um, yeah, okay, no yeah that was like a that was like a glass that was like a a marble thing and it was used do, so it was worthless you do have an orb that emits light that you also got from gorb that i don't think you guys sold i think you still have that let's hold on to no, that. I, I i have that let's, yeah. that's not getting let go no, no, let no, 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 of no, okay. okay willow makes a note in her ledger and then slaps it closed and she looks to you with a big smile mm. And she kind of right. looks so gleeful. She's like, that was my first transaction. I have approval for that what, now. That was so exciting. I'm gonna add We're this best friends now. I'm going to add this to my inventory real fast. Can we add this to, like, where should I add this on? Like, should I add this on my actual physical sheet or my put, digital put on, sheet? Put it on treasure. Put it under treasure? Okay, I'm just because. I like, would put it, it's I would honestly it's, put it in your, your, own, your own inventory. It's in your possession. Yeah. It's your weapon, so. Yeah, it's can, technically a magical item, so I, w I would put it in your inventory. Okay, so can we? Can you put that on my character sheet just so I know to use it in combat at some point? I will make sure to put and, Ebony Penguin uh, and, on and, your... And silly question, is it a one-time use only? You don't know? Actually, no. Task. I... Uh, actually, no, not task. Panic, you know, because you identified it. Um, you can use it once per day. Yes! Uh, but there is a percent chance that it won't work. Okay. That'll be a dud. Okay, okay, okay. That's fine. You... A dud Gwyn. Oh, You'll get one a day, big guy. But right. uh, sometimes it may not work. Your name Wait. is Gripples the Penguin. I will give you details on that item later. It is okay. interesting. Gripples. Gripples. Gripples the uh, Penguin. You said you have potions, too. Yes, correct? I have. Oh, freshly brewed, made by me. I'm so excited. I'm getting so much better. And she pulls them out and she places them. They actually have a move, but she kind of pushes them forward and she kind of pushes the box back. And she goes... Um, we have, uh, the healing potions that I can sell are my own. So we have, uh, potions of healing, which is, uh, 2d4 plus 4. They're 50 gold each. Hmm. hmm. I do have my wand. That's true. And also a couple of healing potions. Plus we're not doing anything too, uh, ex uh, ex We can always strenuous. come back. Yes, yeah, true. Yes. Oh, well, uh, they'll always be here as long as I'm working. Do you have any uh, offensive-based potions? Uh, utility potions. Um, we have some acid flasks, and she kind of digs through some stuff like beneath the counter. Um, most of our other stuff has been sent out southward to deal with the fire giants, so what? we don't have a whole lot. Why? So what? Was it? What? F what? Is, is... Fire giants. Oh. To shit. the south. Whoa! What? Alavast is currently fighting fire giants to the far south. They've been destroying local settlements there and enslaving the people. You haven't heard about this? We no, just no, got here. Actually, no. we just got back. Oh, oh gosh. We, then we, you we, have, we killed you a have... demigod last week, sorry. 
Oh, uh, wow. Uh, oh, <laughs> I studied for my finals. <laughs> it's, it's not. It's not that. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated than that. We didn't actually kill a demigod, but. Uh, wow. So you don't know about the giants, and well, I mean, it's going on since like for a while now, but I guess it's kind of on the down low. They're just sending soldiers out to deal with it. But uh, you guys haven't heard about the murders either. What? Uh, murders. murders. We, apparently, like I said, we just got back, and we we weren't in Alavest for long. Why? We pretty much. Went to see Abacus, saved you, and then left. Wow! Because the day after, and then the day after you left, there there have been a very strange string of murders going through Alabas. Oh, Panic does that blinking guy gif face. I, all all four I'm, of them do it. <laughs> um, uh, she, <laughs> Villo gets very visually uncomfortable. Like, um, I. People have been found on the ground, and it looks like they've been impaled on things, and also have been crushed to death. And they just keep showing up in random places in the city. In Alavast. Yeah, in Alavast. And the guards have just completely been baffled by it. They have a few investigators on it, but there's no answers. Everyone's really confused. This city seems like a... Same, so, it seems so nice and pleasant here. It seems like a breeding ground for bad things happening. Oh, good things too, though. I mean, look at Artemis's new life and, and the potions I'm making. I mean, and there's good things too. Yeah, like this exploding penguin called Gripples. She <laughs> reaches out to you, Pan, and goes, I know it's rough, you just got, you know, your heart broken, but you gotta be optimistic, okay? <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. The first, uh, the I'll, first... I'll remember that. I hope so. The first murder was the strangest of all. I'm sure you've heard of, well, I guess if you haven't been in town that long, my master, Artemis, he had a rival uh, named Delman. Delman, huh? Yeah. Delman. He also wanted to create artificial life. And people found him in the center of the crafting square, the lower crafting district, in the middle, right by the fountain. They have a beautiful fountain. It's gorgeous. Um, and he was dead. And no one knew how he died. So he's just there, dead, like just lying just, down. Yeah, no poison, no wounds, just dead. And then after him, and then after him was a sailor, and he was impaled on the peak of a temple. There is a large metal pyre coming out of one of the temples to Hoketh in kind of the mid uh, clergy district, and there was a man, uh, a, a sailor, and he was just impaled to the stomach, on there. And there's no signs of struggles around the areas for where these murders happen. They just, the bodies are just sort of appearing. Very strange. That's weird. Um, don't be too scared. You guys are really strong. I mean, you don't have anything to worry about. Um, I think you'll be safe. Just, you know, be safe. And, um... All right, fair enough. Um, do you, uh... Well, I'm sorry, just really quick. Were we given the, uh, for the lettuce to be identified, what, sorry. uh... You have it available to be identified by Artemis, by the, the mage in the mid-district. Right. But you still have it, and... Hmm. Will Willow could easily identify it for you if you wanted her to. So we're just taking the fact that there's a bunch of secret murders. Our minds are racing about that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. Just, I'm just like, oh, shit. All right, sweet. Hmm. Uh, there is one more thing. Is it possible that you could identify this, uh, this lettuce? Sure. And she takes it. Uh, now that I have the spell, I learned it from Artemis. He's really smart. Um, I can definitely do that. Everybody make, make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, oh boy. Fuck. Fucking what? Why? Yep, here we go. Yeah. Fuck me. Oh god! Oh wait, no, I did a dex, not a dex save. Oh god, what's wrong with me? Okay. Oh god! Alright. Gaijin, you'll get hit by shrapnel, but whoa, she's whoa, gonna take the most No, no, damage. no, that was, that was, I did, the first roll was just dexterity, oh. the second one was a save. Panic, okay, so then everybody but Borky misses. Oh fuck. What? Wait, uh, every, everyone but Borky misses? Uh, no, everybody but Borky um, 
Borky fails. You guys are fine. Okay. Sorry, my wording's terrible. But Willow Maybe failed. Three hours. It's she okay. Critical failed. Oh no! Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Okay. Borky, oh. you watch as well as as Willow attempts Actually, to identify this real, real, item. Real fast, uh, real fast. Do I have advantage because of danger sense on deck saves? It's not a trap. Okay. Thank you. Um, this is not something you expected. Sorry, it's I, not I, a I, trap. I, I, it's I, I, not I, I, anything I, I, like that. I apologize. Yeah. You take uh, five points of force damage. Oh, shit. And Willow. Do I get blown takes... out the fucking window? Does Borky get? Uh, the windows. The windows do break. One second, I had to figure out. Yeah, no, she's she's fucking down. Oh, uh, no. You guys watch as Willow is tossed back. She's thrown back, crashes into the back wall, and slides down onto the ground, slumps over, and the cabbage floats. And you see an arcane presence to it, and it just and rolls to the ground. The glass of all the potions and the front door and even the fish tank shatter in an instant. Oh, shit. Okay, well, um, fuck everything else. Get her a fucking lesser healing potion in her mouth ASAP. Uh, or get her right. wand on her. Panic, Panic is going to rush over to Willow and he's going to whip out his wand of cure light wounds. Okay. What? cha 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 Morky, get the fish. Uh, so, um... Yeah, fight music. Oh, it's so gross. Ooh, it's so gross. Grab Porky grabs it, like holding aside. Ow! Ow, fish are smacking the wound. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Why do we have fight music? <laughs> are we Tell fighting the cabbage? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're fighting death right now. Um Willow's kinda not moving at the moment. So I use my wand of cure light wounds. Okay, it rolled two D four plus four. It does the same as a as a healing potion. For that item. Fucking cabbage, man. Good roll. As you as you cast the wand, you see a divine magic kind of uh, envelop Willow. And then you can see there's some blood coming down her forehead. Um and then her eye is slowly like blink open and she looks up at you and she goes oh my god i'm in hell there are demons uh close thanks and you're welcome oh panic oh never mind angels i'm dead Whoop, that's not what i wanted you're, you're pinch her on the cheek no you're quite alive you're you're <sighs> quite you're yes you're you're alive oh. but uh what was that Oh, ah, my head. Oh, I'm gonna go grab that cabbage. <laughs> you, you. Um... What happened? Oh my God! The store. She gets up and she like almost trips over herself as she gets up, like still kind of wobbly. Take it, take it easy. Yeah, take oh it. Oh my easy. God! What my happened? My master's gonna be so mad. What happened? Did you, I... you tried to identify the cabbage and. I I don't know. It... Has it ever had a spell cast on it before? We think. We don't We're not really exactly know. sure. That's what we came to you for. I do not know magic. Um. Uh, Panic. Panic's gonna go over to the to the cabbage. He's gonna say. Uh oh! I probably shouldn't do this in the middle of the store. In that case, uh, let's go outside. I got right. it in my hand, so I'll, I'll take it out. All right. Okay. Panic will actually stay in the store and do his best to help pick up the pieces. You mean task? Task, right. Sorry. <laughs> Everyone is panic. Everyone's panic. Everyone right is now. panic. Everyone's in panic. So we uh, we're gonna we're gonna take this thing out into the out into the center of town. Not okay. in the center of town, um, just outside of the store, so nothing else gets fucked up. All right, just take it, take it outside. Okay, cool. And, um... Panic is going to motion for everybody to back off. And it's like, be ready to resuscitate me. Thank you. Good luck. Keep your potions in the bag of holding. I don't think they will be affected 
if this explodes again. What? Is there a is there a rock or something Nadine and I can hide behind while this craziness happens? There's like some crates in front of the magic shop. There's also quite a few people still out and about I, near you, and they're not keeping their distance. No, not real. real um, real. I blow. I'm gonna blow that white oak whistle, and just tell everyone to move. Um. Oh, what would this be? Everyone kind of gives you a glance, and like everyone's kind of going about their business. Um, what would this be? Intimidation or persuasion? I would say persuasion. persuasion. Probably persuasion. So not... roll, a per roll a persuasion check, and I'll just do a general reaction. Blah, nope. Nope. They rolled a 17. Everyone nice. kind of looks at you, the bird hiding behind the crate, and kind of roll their eyes and start, like, moving their carts um, through. So, I, real fast, Panic real fast. Is good. Borky comes up. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. What are you doing, man? What are you doing? I'm checking something. You're checking something for blue that Billy. Yes. Well, let's check it somewhere else, man. Where am I supposed to check it? Outside of town or something. <sighs> damn near yeah. killed. Damn near killed him, man. Yeah, let's uh, let's not play with the option of the ticking time bomb. I guess let's fucking just like. Put this away and give it to the person in Midtown. Fair enough. Sorry, dude. I, I, I was curious to see what you were going to do. But I'm just like, no, I got to do an in-character thing. Um, Task, as you're kind of like helping Willow clean, she pulls out a scroll. And then immediately you see uh, the window, the front window, reassemble itself. You watch the glass of the front counters kind of come together. Uh, Borky, you're still holding on to the fish, and it's currently slapping your chest rhythmically. Um, and you're outside with it, too. Yeah. Um. I want to get that thing back inside. Oh, shit. Yeah, get it. Oh, uh oh, um, uh oh, uh oh. So Borky just throws it through the door. No, you fuck. No. <laughs> no, no, bro. Oh, no, 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 no. Panic's, Panic's gonna, Borky, Panic's Panic's gonna Borky, mage hand it. Borky underhand pitches it, though. Not an over-the-top, underhand <laughs> pitch, like a soft pitch. <laughs> you guys what? you guys watch as Porky rears hack his hand with the fish, and he throws, and what would, would have been an arc, the fish just keeps going up. Panic's gonna and use up. mage hand on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, You watch as a magical hand grabs the fish, and begins to pull it, and it's like trying to, like, it's grabbing it by the tail fin, it's trying to, like, flip its way out of the hand, and it slowly drags back past you, Borky, to Panic's hands. Panic. The poor Borky. fish has had a stressful we've, day. We've what? foiled the plans of demigods, and the one thing that is standing in our way is a fish. <laughs> this is a weird session. Sometimes I wonder what's wrong with you. What are you though? talking about? This is amazing. <laughs> So, uh, Panic's gonna bring the fish back inside. Uh, at this point, Willow's kind of pulled out, like, three or four scrolls, and she's fixed up the entire shop for the most part. Um, she reaches into where she's getting the scrolls from, and she realizes she's out of all of them, and there's one broken glass case, and she kind of sighs and... Ta task, like, pulls out a gold, like, pulls out a couple, a fistful of gold, just goes, how much for it? So could, you re could you repeat that? Did I, we, I couldn't really hear you, man. You're coming in really muffled right now. I said that Task holds out a fistful of coin and he goes, how much to compensate? Um, uh, we're prepared for these sorts of accidents when we identify items. Um, I'll be okay. Um, so, she, like, takes your hand and she cups your fingers back over the gold. Thank you. You saving my life is enough. So, and you saved it again, so, you know. Starting to become a threat, sounds like. <laughs> yeah, it seems so. So you're, um, saying, you're saying that has this happened when you've tried to identify items in the past? Very powerful ones, but... Are you different. saying this cabbage is a powerful magical item? I mean, it could be. I mean, there's certain anomalies like the fish and, and the things I mentioned. So maybe this is just one that, I don't know, was like bread overbaked in the oven. I don't know. I have a headache. I'm sorry. It's all right. Go sit down. We'll we'll handle this. You've done enough for us. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, no problem. I actually have to close up the shop and go study. Although I think I might just sleep instead. Yes, get some rest. Um, we'll see you some other time, Willow. Thank you for visiting me. Um, and if you ever need to buy anything in the Lower Arcana District, I mean, this is the best magic shop. We're certified. We're 
high caliber. We can identify items if they don't explode. <laughs> um, and we provide quality service. That will be, and she leans over to the counter and then she looks and she's like looking for a piece of paper, but it was blown away. And she's kind of like, um, uh, and we provide good service. That you do, that you do. Um, well, well you, I guess we will see you some other time then. All of right. course. Take care. And if, and if you want to go uh, get some cake sometime, I'm available. Really? Oh, panic. that sounds great. Where can I find you? Where is our abode now? You have the address. You still have, like, the envelope. Oh, well, I, uh, I write it down for them. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow, you actually have a house in the crafting district? That's pretty good. What can I say? Good you work. can say that it was a piece of crap like you did before. Well, <clears throat> now, in, in, his, in his defense, he was tactless in that moment. I've never tackless. Does he know talk about tackless moments? I actually wasn't wearing any tacks, you know. I am. Um, I see. Um, it was a pleasure meeting you um, as an orc. Um, take care of your friends. And she opens up the door and ping -ling -ling, the, the bell rings again. And right. she kind of gestures for you out and gives one final little bow and then closes the door. And you hear a clunk of the lock, and then you see the lanterns in the store being put out by her. All right, gentlemen. So that was pretty much all we had. That was all we had to do, yeah, before we all go faff about our separate ways. We well, suppose. unless we're all gonna stay together to go find this investigator to get your quarry. Yes. That's uh, he mm -hmm. was going to meet you, so he's going to actually come and find you, so. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, it's been a long day. I got myself Gripples, the magical exploding penguin. And I'm telling you right now, guys, I'm tired. I think I want a night, a good night's sleep, you know what I mean? Uh, there is one more thing I do want to do. Uh, yeah. I, but it's, ba it's back on our way home in the crafting section. Okay, fine. I want to ask our dwarf friend what he has available for bows. Bows. Mm. He's a he's a he's a renovator. He's not a weapons maker. Oh, uh, shit. All right. Well, hopefully I can yeah. find a I, I can find a store somewhere that dabbles with armor and weaponry. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. I'll uh I'll go see if I can gamble the night away if anyone's got cards going on. All right, you managed to find um, a few people playing cards at a, at a tavern. You notice as you enter, it's basically all dwarves in the crafting district. <laughs> like, you enter and you are a minority, my friend. Um, I want you to roll your, um, I think it's a tool, cards. isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's tool cards. Okay, roll two cards and I'll do, um, I'll do three counter rolls here and see how much you make. The dwarves happily welcome you and your coin to their table. Um, they sit you down. Um, and where's I? Oh, right. I lost my other d20. It flew across the floor. One second. <laughs> Get it together, Nadine. Oh, I know. Worst DM ever. I love rolling real dice, though. I'm sorry. <laughs> One beats you out, and you lose 50 gold pieces. Uh, you beat out the other two and make 75 gold pieces back. So you gain okay. 25 gold pieces to your total money count. Uh, you're called a cheater by a few dwarves, a little bit xenophobic. Um, but, uh, they welcome you. Um, <laughs> when you lose pretty badly, when you use the 50 gold, they actually buy you a drink and kind of, like, lighten the loss, but then you make it right back, and they're like, oh, I'll pay for your drink. What did they <laughs> roll to beat an 18? Uh, one of them got a 20. Oh, oh, oh. Was, The other one was a 14, and the other one was a 6. So. Nice. Yeah. Not bad, but nah. one of those dwarves, he knew his cards pretty well. He was older. He had kind of a, a, a stained, dirty beard. He had like black soot up his arms. Like he's a he's an elderly blacksmith. He's got his history to him. Can Borg, yeah, McQuillan. Can, can, real, real, quick, real quick question. Um, this is out of character. Uh, but how much longer do you think the session's going to go? I'm just curious. I just want to know before I ask uh, a couple of questions. Uh, once you guys head back to your house, I was pretty much going to call oh, there, oh, okay, and then you can okay. do your shopping and whatnot behind the scenes just to save time, and then you can also okay. figure out okay, what cool. you want to do for upgrades. I will, and then we can talk about that later then. I'll tell, talk about that next So, later. Okay, cool. yeah. I'll say with that, um, I assume none of you guys have anything else to do. Most of the shops at this point are closed. Um, everyone's kind of toiling around for the night. Um, you guys are together again, I assume, yeah. walking home? Yep. 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 Okay. Ugh. As you guys are walking home 
it's peaceful. It's quiet. You hear a ton of crickets in the distance. There's something cozy about being back in a city now. There are lots of people. It's a little overwhelming, especially for you, Borky, and, and it's kind of different. Um, you see windows with orange lamp light begin to glow in the distance. And then you hear a faint sound. You're the only ones on the street at this point. It's pretty late at night, probably like one o'clock in the morning or so. You gambled for quite a bit. Mm. And you hear a faint noise. I'll go check it out. Whoa, Foghorn, what? Uh, roll a perception check for those who want to. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very well. Damn. All of you are like, you hear this noise, and you're like, you look to the side, not coming from there. You look to the right, not coming from there either. Ahead of you, no, you turn around behind you, no one's behind you. Then all of a sudden, a corpse crashes down next to you as a body is spread apart into pieces. As a person falls down, narrowly missing you. And the voice, which was shrieking out in terror as they were falling, is killed instantly, smashing to smithereens. And that's where we'll end the session tonight. Whoa! Yeah, whoa! That's where whoa, I whoa. Run. No, no, no. So, no, no. One last thing. I've never awesome. even seen that house before. Run. <laughs> yeah, I, I would run immediately. Holy shit, he exploded. Awesome! <laughs> Rippy, what did you do? Boy, it looks oh. like we're gonna go to go talk to the Sky Giants. I, ga huh? I, ga I guess he took the expressway down. <laughs> All right. Dear Lord. Okay, can I can I talk real fast? That was amazing. That was an amazing was session. I wanna I wanna talk a couple things about what I, what I loved about that. Nadine, your accent game and your character game. You're such a good voice actor, Nadine. I think I scared mom and dad because I was doing the dwarven accent in the shower. It's like, what oh, can I get for you? And I'm just like, mom and dad are like, so what are you doing? And I'm like, practicing. <laughs> so what can I get for you? Yeah. Mom. Yeah. Mom. I dropped it a little bit, so I had moments where it was. Do you have... <laughs> Nadine, honey, do you have a Scotsman in the shower? <laughs> no. It's one of, one of the... One of the... This was I... just, this was cool. We 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 had this was funny. It was it wasn't a single combat, and I love I, and that was, was. I'm sorry, there was no combat. No, 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 no. that was. was I didn't even care. It was like this was just a great session. It was great fun, great interactions. I feel like we're all getting really used to playing our characters and kind of slotted into our roles and conversations. Mm -hmm. you no, know, and like. I, I was so excited for the return of some NPCs in this and some new ones and and things like that. So. That's really. Star can attest to that, that I was, like, last night, I was, like, a kid before Christmas, like, ah, I can't wait. <laughs> I, just, I, I heard you, I, you, I heard you say something about Wolfgang and that he was investigator, and I was like, has, has Monty been looking through my OCs? <laughs> oh, what? Oh, oh, right, your character's name? Because I, I have a OC named Wolfgang who is a paranormal investigator. <laughs> Oh really? Oh, yep, wow. he's in he's one of my uh, he's in one of my other D and D campaigns. I am posting I, I am posting one of my favorite pieces of art real fast here. Well, here let yes. me get you let me get you the actual um, Whew. the actual tweet then. So ah. there's that one. I don't is, is a lot of these are stars, correct? No, these are oh. these are done by. Um, hang on, let me go back and get the name. The first one is done by uh, Smoogin. Who has been doing a whole lot of Greco's fan oh art God. as during these sessions? The oh, second Smoogin, one. Smoogin's actually been drawing a uh, a comic of the final of the fight with Ron Paul. Yep. Yeah. It was yeah. really can good. We, can we actually get a link? Can we? Because uh, I think uh, we, we, you want to make a compilation of those, correct? Like I just. I. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to post this real quick. <laughs> I'm I'm currently looking at the official Twitter. Um, uh, we're trying to find a system to set these things up. This was sent to the official Twitter, by the way, guys. It made me laugh really hard. I'm already logged into it, so I don't no, know if I'm, we'll I'm be allowed. Go, I'm just going to the account. Just retweet what you can. I'll just go through there. Let's go through <laughs> I'll, I'll be retweeting tonight when I'm awake, so. Yeah, out of, out of all the fan art that I was able to find tonight, that, that first one that I posted by, uh, uh, Schmugen, was the only one that didn't have... Actually, you know what? Let me just tag the Unexpectables in it real quick. I just... All the nipple flowers. 
<laughs> well, it's it's there. It's it's the only one that didn't get um tagged with <laughs> unexpectables. <laughs> my favorite is is freaking brackies. Don't talk to me or my child again. <laughs> or my not child. <laughs> my not child. I'm sorry. My favorite one of brackies is the what Colette would draw afterwards of the heroes, and I just love that Greckles has these tiny fucking like stout arms. Like he has no business. <laughs> he, like like he he doesn't have an arm. He just it's like hands on his shoulder. <laughs> Shmugan, I actually I got an amazing piece of a Romfall art here from Ethan Lamb a, at Toon Sepai. It's pretty incredible, actually. All right, go for it. I you know I got it right up here on the stream right now. Well, can you post oh. it like in the? In oh jeez, that is really Wait. it's really nice. Let me see. It's of who? Romfall. It's Romfall. It's of Romfall. Oh god, get me in here. It's amazing. Yeah, it's really beautiful see. looking. Let's see. Oh, I'm going to have to probably sit through an ad because I'm not allowed dreams. Oh, yeah, that! Oh, it's so good! That's pretty ama It's pretty impressive. It's There's a lot of art being thrown out here. If you guys could tweet it at, with the hashtag, the unexpectables, that would be really handy because... Uh, mm -hmm. Or at the Twitter. At the Twitter is probably easier um, if you can fit in at the unexpectables official Twitter because then I can just go through the mentions and I can find it and blog as much. Did you guys see the the picture of uh, that Fernando did the, of the uh, the birthday song? Yeah, yeah. I am, yes. I, I'm, 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 that was actually the next one I was gonna post. It's one of my favorite photos. I actually, real fast, I'm gonna copy copy link real. I'm gonna just quickly show you this one real fast. See, Brack, some of Bracky's art is just pretty. Cool. And when and when you get a chance, can you get a uh, Sir Mal uh image of Task and uh, Tarsk? Oh, that one was sick. Absolutely. So we sweet. have another one here from Bracky, which when you least expect it. I will take your nipple. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like this. This. There's this, 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 this like this is. There's just. There's just. I just. I just. All the look on Crackle's face, like I just. This is. He's holding his nipple, like yeah, yeah. I want you to, man. No, they're mine. The max, my, this mine. More like freaking try it. End up with a knife in your back in your sleep. That's good. Do it. <laughs> Do it, bitch. This is. This is Abacus. <laughs> And the gang, this is Abacus being wished happy birthday by the whole Unexpectables crew. Uh, favorite pose uh, is Task, who is just so cute. <laughs> this is Riff Rack, who's just like, ah. On the table. He's on the table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you knew what this is. This is, that's just beautiful. By the way, there are a lot of bits and subscriptions throughout the whole stream. Thank you so much for giving yeah. that. You, thank you so much for supporting the show, guys. This is how we can get some amazing art done by the one, the only Star Exorcist, and how I can pay my lovely sister to DM for us. So we appreciate all the support you guys give us here. We've got some more art to jump through real fast here, though. I, 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 love, I love the happy birthday picture with just Abacus looking like she's going to tear her heads off. That's literally what she looks like. Like, that was how I... <laughs> I'm going I'm I'm to say this, Bracky. That, that pose of Abacus looks so much like a Bill Watterson pose from... Yeah. From, that looks like a Calvin pose yeah. from Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah. Oh, we got we got another one from uh we got another one from Spoogan about the happy the happy birthday scene. Can you can you post these in the in can you post these yeah, in the Discord? Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got you. Thank yeah. you so much. This Thank one right much. this one right here. This one's got fucking Taurus going back. <laughs> yeah, right, oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh probate. What I mean, Oh probate. Oh probate. Oh, probate. Oh, Thank you. Willow needs to fix that storefront. Here's for the cost of the materials. Probate, thank 3, you. So, bits. Thank you so much, Probate. Really appreciate it, dude. Oh my goodness. We'll have to buy more scrolls to mend the windows. More, but... more scrolls. No, it's good. I love, how, I love how fucking miniature Taurus is in this. What <laughs> 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 the fuck? What the fuck? Does Taurus get tall just... and gets about the same size as Tass? Sometimes we forget he's there. I'm like, is he just following us, kind of? I guess. I no, he's, no, he's just following us. He's just there. Yeah, he's just there. He doesn't do anything. Something I honestly was imagining <laughs> when, when when all the explosion was happening in the in the magic shop that he was just standing still the whole time for, throughout everything. <laughs> Just standing, yeah. staring at, like staring at, a, just staring at, like you know that, you know that shot of, you know what I think of it now? I think of it like that dog looking at the cupcake. That's what I think of Taurus. <laughs> <laughs> I think of the dog looking at the cupcake always with this blank as fuck stare, and <laughs> in a constant state, a state of epiphany. A state of just like I, I, I am here and I am human. Let's see if there's. Did you guys post some other art? Oh yeah, this. I like. I'm gonna post this amazing art by at, at Sir Mal, Mal Malervic. 
which is the one you yes. like. So I did, I'm going to post this. Yeah, you know, this, this is going to get. Really he pops into my stream a lot. Yeah, mine this too. Is, He's been drunk. This is pretty nice. damned impressive. I don't even know what to say. I mean, Zito, please speak to this. It's, we have a Greckles one too. We were going to show it in the um, art stream. Oh, please, oh, oh, dear. please link that in the, Please link that while we Zito. Please, uh, please, please talk about this because this is this is really important to you. Oh God, I don't know where it is. It's buried. This is just um, fucking amazing. This this is a d amazing digital painting. It is just absolutely astounding. Like I, I for the longest time I've always been sitting here going, you know, uh, I whenever I get the chance to, and like for the longest time I didn't have a chance to because I still don't have my Cintiq or my computer shit with me. I was like, I gotta draw a Taurus one of these days. But now it's just like, okay, you know what? I'm okay with this being the frame of reference for Taurus. <laughs> Is... I'm so sorry. I, I don't actually have the other piece by Malverick. Oh, um, no worries, no worries. It's okay. on my external hard drive, and I don't have it we with will me do, at the We moment, will be doing so. a fan art special at one point. Maybe not on a Wednesday, but maybe on another day as an additional stream at some there's, point. There's also yeah. all the logos, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, if we could grab and a couple. Gifts. Yeah, there's, there's um, been some pretty amazing art here. I wish we had time for all of it. Oh, wait. I've, I've got the I've got the, the sort of Malverick of, of Greckles. Do you want me to just put that in chat? Yeah, oh, please. yes, oh, please. Ab absolutely. Please do that. Okay. I didn't know if we shared that one or not, but no, it's like... I don't... It, I'm, it, I'm, I'm it's trying, it's trying all of my... It's literally all of my wallpaper now. Oh, oh dude. It's, funny. <laughs> it's it's League of Legends Greckles. Oh, wow. That's really it's cool. It's in there. Oh, I think I, I think I did link this at one point, but it's pretty great. And there is don't talk to me or my not child ever again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then there's that tavern one I, I posted or, uh, just up there. Oh, that's and here we go. This is this is this is pretty damn slick. Like mm -hmm. this is pretty damn dope. Yeah, that, that, that image of fucking Task and Tarisk is now my desktop picture. Like this is this is pretty impressive. Like I like, Sir Malarvik, you are a very talented individual, sir. Like, goodness gracious. And see, that's also, the thing. I think he also did the uh, Ron Fault piece, didn't he do I the one of so. Ron Fault? I think he, did, I think he did, might have. I think he did the Badass Wall Fault one as well. Like, these, these, these are just... These are just... I love the fact that he's reading my mind because his daggers actually are kunai and his short swords are wakazashis. No, he, Frickin' like, weeaboo. Uh, <laughs> hey, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, wow. Don't, Nadine, knock, you... don't knock it till you try, Nadine. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't think you understand. <laughs> he wears that with a brat. That's a badge of pride to him. He's like, ah, oh, damn right I am, and I'm the best. I'm the best damn weeaboo on the force. <laughs> Date bio. Sorry. Uh, no, it's uh one. <laughs> uh, one thing I want to speak to actually something that happened at uh, Anime Expo uh, this week, last weekend while I was down there. I signed about, I think, not exaggerating, 10 5e rulebooks. Um, a lot nice. of people who watched the stream came up to me and said how much they loved the stream. A lot of them flat out said to you, Nadine, that you're one of the best DMs we ever heard, including three Marines <laughs> who are on uh, leave. Oh, oh, leave. And they, all these guys were just like, yeah, no, seriously, the D&D &D streams are great. Your sister's an amazing DM. And I'm just like, these guys are just jacked. I'm just like, this is, this is dope. This is, this is sweet. <laughs> And if Nadine was here, she'd be. Damn it! I know, Nadine, and that's Nadine, Nadine, and this. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry, you can't see a bunch of Jack Marines being a fan of your work, uh, but uh, one day. they could be in here. I have no idea, but they, they, they were really nice guys. But one of the things is a bunch of people actually talked to me about. I saw some, a post someone said, and I talked about a couple of people about it. Someone said they're like they were like this with the the D and D stream, and I think I might have mentioned this last week too. Um, what's really neat about this, and what people have expressed to me. And said to me, because I, I, I personally am just like, I love going in here having a lot of fun with everybody. But one of the things that is pretty amazing is someone made this comparison. It's like, when I want to watch, like, a really good dramatic D&D &D session, I will watch and listen to The Critical Role. When I want a pure comedy, I will listen to uh, Adventure Zone or watch uh, Harmon Quest. When I want a cartoon... I'll listen to the unexpectables. And I was like, holy shit. And I talked to some people about that, and a lot of everyone kind of agreed on that. And I think that's kind of amazing. And a lot of that comes down to two factors here. Like, I mean, three factors. I can say uh, us, as the act, us, us as the players all interacting with each other. But Nadine, your storytelling, every single role we make becomes a painting, your, a painting, your painting, for, a picture you're painting for er all, everyone listening. Like, and, um, like, then that's truthfully, and a lot of it does do, like, the aesthetic and everything that's come from this is all come down to Star Exorcist's amazing art. So, seriously, mm -hmm. everyone, thank you so much for taking part in this. 
So, it's been, it's been yeah, fun yeah. so far. Invite us to cons. No, sh <laughs> I don't have a passport. Don't say Get that. a passport. In invite me to cons. Guys, guys, guys. But, but seriously, invite. <laughs> and write me to cons. Well, well, seriously though, guys. I just got done with five of them, so I need a break. Oh my god! I posted more art in the Discord. We, we have I... one of we we did one of Task, who's in the nightmare. There's oh, one that's, of that's really cool. the Task in the nightmare mm -hmm. is pretty sweet. I'm gonna pull that up real fast. Here, copy link. We're gonna be doing that. But no, seriously, thank I'm you. I'm grabbing. Everyone. I'm grabbing what I can. If I missed anything, I'm really sorry. But I'm, I'm just kind of grabbing this what I can find. Is super damn. Dope. This this is what we gotta contend I, with. God I, damn. What a. I didn't. Even, I didn't even know this beautiful lady. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty. That is pretty fantastic. There. Who is this made by? Um. Uh, the first one is by. Sorry, I just. I got it. I got it. I got it. It's a uh, Arena Kelly. Arena Kelly, yeah. And then. So this amazing. Hold on, hold on. I'm posting them. I'm posting them one after another. Oh, and uh, speaking of, uh, speaking of people watching Critical Role and uh, the unexpected the Adventure Zone Babs. and the Unexpectables, uh, we are currently still number two in current D and D streams, right behind Geek and Sundry. Oh, nice. really? Fucking what? Christ. Yeah, we're second to Geeks and Sundry now when we stream. What? Nadine, yes, just just roll with it. <laughs> <laughs> just roll Literally. with it. Literally. Roll with it. Get it? I'm rolling. I'm I'm rolling. Do you understand that we out we actually Nadine, do you understand that the stream itself outdraws the official D D streams? You get that, right? <laughs> Nadine <laughs> That sounds like someone is getting it. Nadine, okay. this is the unexpected babes, and they're adorable. The best girls. The best girls. Well, we're gonna get some more art here, but yeah, we were we were number one tonight for a while actually too. Before uh, yeah. uh, the, the Geek Center came out, we were number one again tonight until like near the end here. And cup just blew up, by the way. What's up? Cup, cup, cup just blew up. By cup the way, cup is blowing up right now. For, for Monty's passport. Monty's yeah. passport. <laughs> Monty. you just, you I just have to go and get photos done and get and a bunch here of people is of be stuff. Beautiful lady. Here's beautiful lady, the beautiful lady. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this beautiful lady. Look at this beautiful lady. Hey Nadine, 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 yeah, Nadine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we, we were number one by over by well over 200 viewers, but once the session wrapped up, a bunch of people left, and that's fine. That's fine. This is just yeah, the, this, is the bonus, this is the bonus part of the session. Don't here. be an ass, Taka. <laughs> What? I'm not being an ass. And here is uh, amazing art. Now, that, that, now, who did the beautiful lady? By the way, who did the unexpected babes? That's, um, she's drawn stuff for us before. Unexpected Babes was by uh, King of Citrus, known as the Citric King. Thank you so may, much for this art. May his orange juice be ever plentiful and full of vitamin C. Mm. Um, may he uh, may, may who, they, who, they banish Kirby. Who did beautiful? Beautiful. That's by <laughs> S Sigourney Martin. Thank you. Yeah. Thank he's you. done art before. Thank you so much. And here is the last piece of art that we have here in the Discord so far. And this is also done by the, the person who did the Unexpected Babes, correct? Yeah, I think so. And this is... Yeah. This I'm trying is pretty, to find it. This is a pretty fantastic yeah. interpretation. Like, Borky's smile, is... Borky smile is amazing. I really like Grapples Bay with a 5,000 bit yeah. cannonball! What? Here it goes! Here it goes, watch, watch the cup! <laughs> Fire watch in the, the hole! Get everyone just, just got tossed out. He's like oh the big God. show. Oh my God, Probate! Probate, thank you Dear so Lord. much for the bids, dude. Oh my goodness. Oh, Nadine's blushing. I can hear Nadine blushing right now. No, yeah. shut up. <laughs> Boom, there it goes. Audible oh, red cheeks. Audible. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this is fantastic art as well. This is this. Thank you so much, everyone, for the fan art. Like, the fan art itself is bringing these scenes together, truly. When we do the fan oh. art special, we'll have to run through the actual um, <laughs> comic that one artist has done for the yeah, final fight. Yeah, uh, Shmugan, Shmugan did the finale, the entire finale. In the comic, um, yeah. the fight in comic form, which is also, fantastic. Can I, can, I, can I say how fucking amazing Tasks' abs are? Like that is <laughs> Task. Task is fucking rip. Task is gluten free. Always has been, and I think it's amazing what a gluten free lifestyle can get you. Huh? Dude, you're shaping uh... up to be Bada Task. <laughs> God damn. So I assume you guys want to talk about the building renovations in private or. Uh, it's. I, I think that I uh, do. Oh. We want because I think that's. Something... I'm a ninja. <laughs> Thank you. Tell you, tell, 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 oh tell, tell, tell you, tell you what we're, tell you what we're gonna. I think we're gonna sit on that for like a week. I need to sit and think about that. Sit on. 
sit on that for a week i prefer to know as soon as possible oh what we're gonna do and but, stuff? oh i mean oh we can yeah i think we want the. i mean guys we can we want the tavern right like that's what we want i uh, i have brother figure, agendas. Uh, we what's, need to figure can, out like what's gonna what's gonna generate revenue what's gonna generate attention like we probably need a little bit more information on everything before we start. i i can and i can do that if we want to do that right now real quick if okay, anyone's okay it. with that yeah. sure yeah sure sure sure, sure. Okay. If you just run um, down the list of literally what everything can do for us. Okay, I can do that. I, I kept it kind of broad just because I, I made this actually before we even started the campaign, by the way. This was planned before we started. Oh, wow. Um, so your open renovations you have, and this is actually good for the people in the Twitch chat because they can learn what you can do. So by opening a tavern, you will attract um, guild members. People will join your guild. Um, and they'll have a place to socialize and talk to people and kind of convene. You will serve alcohol, but you would need to, in order to have the tavern run, you would need a um, bartender. So you'd need a certified bartender. So the bartender would serve drinks and also ensure that no one steals anything in the tavern. Okay. Um, the bathhouse edition is for comfort. It lets you guys clean. Um, it will probably assist in your image when dealing, especially with people like Abacus and Brook. Um, in like kind of the higher levels of the city. Um, as you, as your current state being the races you are, you are kind of frowned upon a little bit, but at the same point, you know, coming all dirtied and like banged up from a fight also looks kind of shoddy. Um, a garden attracts druids. In order to have a druid, you would need a garden for them to tend to and also be able to um, meditate in and uh, live in. Oh, that's good to know. Uh, Claire, uh, you would need a druid in order to have a stable. A druid would take care of animals that you bring in and would make sure that they are upkept. So if you wanted things like chickens or cattle or horses, um, the druid would take care of them for you. Uh, but you would need a garden for them to reside in and to do their practice in. Um, a temple is pretty self-explanatory. A temple is a place of worship. And you would basically, if you got a temple done, it would be a bulk temple. It would be a very, like, stock cookie cutter temple. And then whatever cleric you hire or allow in uh, will determine what that temple uh, reveres or worships. Um, clerics are obviously, like, as you've seen, they can, they can cure diseases. They can cure curses, wounds, things like that. Um, and they also are necessary for fight pits. Uh, it is actually a prerequisite for a fight pit. In order to have a legal fight pit in Alavast, you need to have a cleric in order to provide healing if someone is severely injured. Okay. Uh, fight pits, it's illegal for fight pits to result in death. And as such, they need to be registered. And you also need to have a cleric on hand, kind of like a paramedic in a way. Okay. An okay. Arcanium will attract wizards, sorcerers, and warlocks. Um, if you build an Arcanium and you hire a sorcerer, a warlock, or a wizard, um, they will. they can make simple magic weapons for you they can make uh potions for you um and they uh can basically kind of do odd jobs and things like that enchanting kind of so so um but that is an option you you can take you can have um you would also the other thing to know about that sort of thing um wizards and mages and warlocks are in huge demand in alabas it sometimes takes a long time to get a person in, but if you have someone you know who you think would want to move in, then you probably have better luck ah, with that. Okay. A quest board and bounty board, um, if you manage to attract people into your guild, a quest and bounty board would allow uh, people to do jobs for you. So they'd be able to go out, they would gain the rewards, but you would get a cut. Um, in most cases, you would get Alabastian credits if people come back from doing missions. They would get the gold and you would get the, the credits. Since they don't have a place to live, you guys would get the actual benefit of that. Okay. Um, a messenger's Roost is, if you remember, you guys got those stamps from Rivi and Lily and Ozzy. Um, if you build a Messenger's Roost, you can send letters without having to pay a fee. Okay. And you get your choice of pseudo-dragon messengers. Um, you get a choice of pigeons. Uh, hawks. Nice. Or um, f uh, flying constructs. Small Jeez. bug constructs. Nice. Uh, um, then employees, uh, you obviously you have your bartender. They would serve drinks. A chef can make food as long as you make a kitchen. Um, the prerequisite is you would have to basically buy the chef and the kitchen at the same time. Okay. Because uh, they'll want it a certain way for whatever food they prepare. Um, maids and servants are, um, they'll help keep the place clean. They'll keep things kind of under, like for the most part, like your bedrooms, the tavern, um, the temples in some cases, they'll ensure that it's clean um, and managed and also like keep the, keep the building up to date. 
Um, In-house bards, while panic could perform when you're on adventures, um, having to drink in a tavern full of silence is pretty rubbish. By having in-house bards, you basically can either open the stage and have new talent come in, or you can hire your own sort of round of entertainment through the Bards Guild. Um, they could send you in people, or you could just hire a band that you like and just have them there, like kind of like Star Wars. I, I wonder stuff. about that. There's there's a lot of options there for what you can do to hire a bard. There's a lot yeah, of different I mean, ways you can do that. For lore reasons. Uh... Yeah, exactly. No, 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 um, no, 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 real quick, I all I know is we're gonna have America's Got Talent style show. Oh my god. <laughs> um, I hated it. It was complete rubbish. Get off the stage. Um, wizard sorcerers and warlocks. Um, you would want to have an arcanium for them to move into. Um, they cost the most because you're probably gonna have to pay and provide them supplies to make the items that you want. So they'll want to basically they'll probably ask you for some money just to cover the basic costs for like potion making and like you know if you like oh i want a magic throwing dagger they'll be all right well you're gonna have to provide me the money to buy the dagger and then i'll do what i can okay. um a cleric is uh is yeah a thousand alabastian credits um if you have a cleric they will not stay unless you donate um items to the temple occasionally oh, man. um so you'd have to things like just a little bit of gold here and there or gemstones or items that are like kind of reliquary um are items just to give you don't have to give like a ton but in order to keep them kind of on their on your good side you kind of want to make sure that you're you're providing to their faith as their faith is providing to you and we can we choose the deity um no you do a call out and then you'd get someone random you could turn them away if you don't like them <laughs> um <laughs> i like him he's got bad eyes he's blind yeah Oh my god. Yeah. Um, druids are extremely hard to get, um, especially ones that want to stay within the city walls. Most of them want to work in the actual continent and actually tend to woods, as it is what they're trained to do. Uh, but you can find usually apprentices who want to kind of intern in the city and do a job. Um, and they, they would require a garden. Um, an information broker is you get through the Thieves Guild. Uh, they will provide you information uh, at 50 gold per cost, mm. and they will provide that information specifically to you under their sort of service. Um, this is something that you have to find yourself. You can't just like put out a call for an information broker. You need to find one. Man. Um, a bookie requires a fight pit. They allow people to bet on fights. All on um, me. All on me. I'm going to win this fight. <laughs> All right. They, oh, uh, probably would. <laughs> They um uh, well, they'll they'll be the ones who kind of make the the fight pit more popular. If you bet on fight pits, they do better. Um, and then they basically make sure that the fights are rigged to be fair. That there's not like you know, you know, people aren't just no, like, no one in there no one comes other. in. What was that? Sorry, you kind of. No one no one comes in with like a like a weapon, a hidden weapon or some shit. Yeah, no something like that. Um, and then guards are pretty obvious. They'll guard your building. Um. For the tavern, they can be kind of useful, but you basically 200 uh, credits per guard. Um, and then prerequisite uh, renovations, I've probably mentioned all of these. Uh, you have your kitchen, which will serve you food, so you don't have to worry about rations while you're staying in town. You have a fight pit, which is uh, you have to pay every year um, uh, 500 credits just to register it to the city. If you don't register your fight pit, um, you could face charges and jail time. Um, stables, you require a druid, and that's where you can keep your animals, as I mentioned in the past. You can also get a library if you have a wizard, a sorcerer, a warlock, or any sort of available researcher, not just a magical person. Um, and they would basically provide you known information about um, surrounding areas of Alabast. For example, if you wanted information about demons because you're dealing with Stilhabity, they could potentially get you information that would aid you in fighting different enemies in different regions of the world. Um, you can also convert um, part of the space into an inn. Um, this requires three maid servants, a tavern. I didn't list the rest, but it requires uh, a decent amount of space and it takes a while to make. Um, oh, it's also worth noting all these, every time you hire someone into your, um, your guild, like as an official employee, um, they have, uh, on top of like you pay them, they also get a place of residence there, which is already like covered as being hired. Um, Adric would come in and build them basically a room for them to sleep in. Do we have the ability to possibly recruit NPCs through travel? 
Yes, you can. If you have a place for them to go and you meet someone in your travels who you think is interesting or would be an asset, you can direct them to your guild hall. Yeah. And they can work oh, for man. you. Oh, this, man, this feels like freaking Sui Coden, boys. Yeah, it does. We Sui we su Coden, boys. So, so, here's the thing. Uh, so, obviously, we want to get people in here. I say the most feasible thing for us to do purchase-wise right now is tavern, bartender, and quest board. Which, also, we need a kitchen. Don't forget to include the price of your employees as well. Mm -hmm. Tavern well, bartender. So. so kitchen would be 1,000 AC. Can, um, can any of these uh, hired-on guild members, whether we pay for them or they come in on their own volition, can they come with us on quests? No, they will not. It depends on their attitude. Most mm -hmm. cases, they'll probably stay. Okay. Um... Chef, we need one of those for the kitchen as well, right? You would need a chef in the kitchen simultaneously. You'd have to get both of them at the same time. So okay, we're we, so... looking. We we only have a, we would have a finite amount of money, so that wouldn't work. So if you we guys did... got a significant chunk. You got thirty five hundred AC. So okay, if we we have enough money to get tavern. A bartender, a chef, and a kitchen. You want to just do that then? That's is that exact. That's, that's exact. That is how. Okay, silly question. Can we? Are you gonna name the chef? I, I I will accept. I will accept this tavern if I get to name it. <laughs> oh well, we're, we're gonna have we're gonna have an actual out of character debate about what we're gonna call the fucking tavern. Oh, no, the tavern, so tavern. This, no, dude, so dude, a, this, dude. My my name, Toad in the Hole. Ooh, that's strong. That's Ooh, strong. Toad in the hole. Toad in the hole. Toad in the hole. Toad in the hole. Oh. <laughs> Wait, say that. A toe in a the, hole. No, toad. the toad. The toad, toad in the hole. Toad in the hole. Toad in the hole. Toad in the hole. So that this isn't just for. This isn't just. Um, the the tavern and our guild hall are going to be separate, right? They'll be separate entities, but they'll all be. Yeah, owned. by by the looks of your, it, only we can access our. Yeah, only you guys can access your personal bedrooms. That lion carved door is magical and will only let you guys in. Okay, because I'm I'm thinking, we all know what the guild name is going to be, right? The unexpected. The unexpectables. The unexpectables. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the guild hall. And the, 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 the people are tossing out the floating cabbage. The floating cabbage. Mmm, <laughs> that's a... <laughs> after that thing killed someone. Uh... Yeah, not as keen. People are saying the Krabby Shack. <laughs> the Krabby. Uh -huh. Oh, quiet Krabby Shack supporters. Welcome, the crab. Welcome to the Krabby Shack. Can oh I can I make God. a suggestion about future purchase? Yeah. I, I honestly think we should get because here's the thing. If we ever want to get Lily back, if we get a place to put her like out of character, because not only would it be actually easier and probably a little more efficient to get a druid in terms of like someone to heal us, someone to help us get information and get a little bit of utility. Because if we're going to be fighting with like, oh, this one particular cleric comes in and like is like, well, we want you to donate, et cetera, et cetera. I, I think it'd be better to get a druid for all of the passive restorative jobs. Plus, we already know druids. Druids wouldn't actually probably tend to you. They'd only tend to the animals in their care. A cleric would be the one that would tend to you. Yeah, then, so well, then what's then what's the the purpose of having a druid? The druids, if you have if you buy horses or you want to keep cows or chickens to like maintain hey, food, they would take care lion? of those animals. What mm. about a pet lion? You don't have a pet lion, Barky. But what if I really want it? Will you take care of it? Oh, I mean, me or someone else if I get bored. Literally, if you found like something in the woods and you did want to like keep it as an animal, like a druid would like basically take care of it for you, so you wouldn't have to worry about it. Damon. All right, you know what? Let's go. I want to, I want to beast tame the owl bear. Ta ta oh ta are we all agreed? Tavern, kitchen. We hire a bartender and a chef. Yeah, I'm down. Okay, yeah. okay. now Nadine, you want to name now, and then we're gonna. What, do we want to call the? We, so we, toad, we got okay, like toad in the hole. Or tell me, how about we think about the name this week? And we, I want, I, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need to, I need to like, I need to like, let this sit on my palate for a while. <laughs> all right, sure. Yeah, yeah. Are, we all, are you cool with that? Are you cool? Can we uh, yeah. after after we after yeah, I'm down with that. After we make these purchases, can we aim for the fight pit? 
I kind of want the fight pit really bad. I want to, I want the Same. fight pit. All right, Borky, Borky, you gotta go in there. Fine, but I fought so much, Chas. Listen, you want money? Oh yeah, that guy said you. That guy said you're not cool. All right, all right, fuck that guy. <laughs> no, 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 Borky, sure. Borky, Borky, Borky. That guy said you're not tall enough. That is complete horseshit. Uh, also, remember, we're not allowed to kill anyone. So. Suplex City, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Starts Brock Lesnaring people in the fight pit. Well, uh, no, well, if we register it, and at the same time, if we, uh, if we register it, and then, uh, if someone dies under, underneath us, at least the fucking thing is insured, and it's, That's like, true. sanctioned. That's true. Tell you, what, we'll, you, you have to, it's a fucking contact sport. You have to at least, like, recognize the idea that walking into a fucking contact sport where you punch a dude in the fucking jawline, you're gonna get some fucking injuries and maybe even some deaths. How 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 much would four uh four wrestling ropes and some turnbuckles cost to put in the middle of that fight page? Just, just I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> you can make that. Ad Adric is your bro. He will make it as as custom as he can. Ooh. If it exceeds talk, talk up, so what he has not... in terms of material, he will probably charge you a little bit extra, potentially through gold or through credits, depending on what you want. Oh, okay, so we're making a fucking wrestling tournament. Let's guys, let's just baby steps. Someone, someone just exploded <laughs> beside us. Let's, we'll, let's we'll, a couple steps, and then we'll have a wrestling tournament. Okay. <laughs> we'll have a tournament. We'll have our own tournament arc. <laughs> We're gonna the, have unex a the Unexpectables G One. <laughs> the Unexpectables G One Climax Tournament. Oh my god. Anyways, this has been fun. But yeah, we'll take the we'll take the tavern, uh, the okay. the kitchen, and the two employees that come with that. Kitchen is a thousand, and then the chef. I've I've done the I've done the math and it adds up to 200. exactly three thousand five hundred. Uh, actually three thousand four hundred. Yeah, we have an extra hundred. What what can we get? Uh, we, we can get it. We can get a we can get a maid slash servant. <gasps> yes, yes, that's we need, why we, we need we need we we need it we need a servant and we need we need to, we need to come up with the greatest servant name ever. <gasps> Grimbo. <laughs> Grimbo. <laughs> Not really. No, I'm Grimbo. kidding. I'm kidding. Grimbo. I've got some speed for you, master. Yo, no, okay, no, I'm so, joking, I'm joking, I'm obviously, joking. obviously, if we're gonna get a fucking maid, we're gonna get a maid or a servant, if it's gonna be a servant, it's obviously the name's gonna be Meadows. <laughs> what? That's, that is the best, but fuck you, that is the ultimate butler name, Meadows. <laughs> Meadows? Oh, I'm personally uh... fond of Sebastian, but whatever. <laughs> Sebastian, ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Alright, guys, this is, this is fun, I think we're, I think we're good here. Yep. Yeah. Everyone's All like right. Obado. What's Obado? What's Obado? Oh, oh, Obado. No, that was from the that was from the stream a night ago. That I. Well, who who the fuck is the character in Naruto? Obito or something? Oh, like, oh yeah. In <laughs> passing, I was just like, who the fuck is Obado? <laughs> <laughs> Obado. Obado. No, he works at the Krabby Shack. Anyways, guys, thank <laughs> you so much for coming uh, to the Unexpected Stream, and guys, we will see you next Wednesday for Chapter Seven. Later, guys. Bye.